Islam, 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 and welcome to MHHS Eyes Wide Open. This is your host, Anita Ill, along with my co host, Ms. Raim Aleph Ill. Peace and love, Anita. Peace and love, Morris. Peace Good and day. love, Good. all right. All right. And I'm waiting for Raz Mariah Bay to press one. All righty, and while I'm waiting for her, let me bring in Cujo Adwai El. Islam, more peace and love. Islam. Islam, peace and love, more. All right, oh, and here is Raz. Okay, all right, peace and love, everyone. I I uh, had forgotten to press the one. Islam, everyone. <laughs> all right, Islam. All right, all right. Um, now, I didn't get to play our Moors that have been kidnapped and are being held hostage because last when last Tuesday was so horrible um, yeah. that I just didn't want to repeat it. So um, I'm going to have to um, redo it for next Tuesday. So we're just going to go right into our... Um, broadcast, subject matter. Um, but before we do, I just want to send a big shout-out to our um, listeners, our Internet listeners. The chat room is open. Big shout-out to um, Family Listening Here, Great Britain Corporation, um, Family Listening uh, over in South Africa, near the South Africa Corporation, the Netherlands Corporation, Islam to Brother Albasat, uh, let's see, the uh, Japan Corporation, uh, the Mexico Corporation, Venezuela Corporation, Cuba Corporation, uh, Brazil Corporation, and to family near other various corporations that we have yet to connect with. Peace and love. Thank you for listening. Uh also, big, big shout-out to our callers. Thank you so much for uh, calling in, filling up the phone lines every week before the broadcast even begins. Thank you for building, sharing, sending your energy, and participating in the discussion. Uh, so um, with that, let's see. I think that was everything. So let's move on to the topic of today's broadcast, which is it's actually – coming about because of the discussion we had last week. And the discussion was um, on these allegations that the RB Bay Publications is a 501c3. And I thought that it would be very informative to analyze this 501 that everybody talks about. You know, and that's the topic. Have you researched what 501 is? You know, because many people talk about the 501C or the 501C3 or 5013C, and, and, you know, there are those who allege that many more have one of these. However, here's the question. Have you ever looked up this 501C code and reviewed exactly what it is? For those of you who I have... um, First to say that we don't have one. Make that clear again. Well, absolutely. Well, (laughs) it it becomes redundant. It becomes redundant to even say that. Right. Right. If you did the research, right? Right. And for for those who we have on email, we, what was attached to... Um, this particular broadcast was a PDF of the 501 section. Uh, What's really crazy to me is that the 501, the prefix of the 501, Title 26. Mm -hmm. Title 26. Now, 
God. For anybody, for anybody to say that if you do have a 501c3, your, uh, what is it, your, your, your owned or something by the Vatican or something like that, let me just say this. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because exactly. Title 26 is the Internal Revenue Service Policy and Procedures. Now, if you do your research, you're going to find out that Title 26 is not a part of the United States Code. It is, in fact, not, it is not positive law. And there's a website on the RB Bay Publications website from an Internal Revenue Service employee that states Title 26 and 27 is not positive law. It applies to federal federal employees and anyone else who volunteers. There's a bit more to the letter than that, but if you uh, if you can go on the website and you can look this up now, I, so now in in the um, book uh, in the book correcting the position of the Internal Revenue Service, you get even more detail about what that is. Um, I want to say it's under title. Uh, um, I can't remember the title, but it's section one of a title, but it's in the, in the correcting the position of the IRS. And it lists all the titles that are positive law. 26 and 27 is not a part of that list. In fact, there's a footnote that states title 26 and 27 is not positive law. So I went, because I wasn't clear, what exactly is positive law? And guess what? There's a definition of that in the Black's Law Dictionary, which is also in the um, um, it's also in the uh, correcting the position of the IRS. And I'm just trying to find it real quick here, but while I, so that I can read it, and 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 the, you know, I, I I just want people to think about this when. You hear things, or somebody says anything to you. You have an obligation if it is if it is if you feel that it is relevant to you for any reason. You have an obligation to go and investigate that. You cannot take random bits of information and j- just because somebody said it and not do the appropriate research of what exactly that means. That's that's an injustice on your part. So uh, let me just give you the definition of positive laws in your Black Law Dictionary, page 1324. And it reads, law actually and specifically enacted or adopted by proper authority for the government of an organized general society. Let me read that again. Law actually and specifically enacted or adopted by proper authority for the government of an organized general society. Now, the key word there is proper authority. Now, people want to say, Talk about this title, this this title twenty six five zero one, and and title twenty six five zero one. The title is is in it. The name of it is exemption from tax operations and certain trusts. Exemption from tax on corporations as a more. You are not obligated to taxes. As a more, you do not have a corporation at all. 
And you certainly do not have anything to do with Title 26, which talks about taxes, but is not positive law. I don't, I mean, it's not any he's making this up. This is, this is, this is, you can, on your, on your cell phone, you can Google this and find it out. Right? It's not even, it's not even difficult. 501C, that category is a list of exempt organizations. And 501 C three, and you just get to it. It reads corporations and any community chest fund or foundation organized and operated exclusively for religious, charitable, scientific testing for public safety, literary or educational purposes or to foster national or international amateur sports competition, but only if no part of its activities involve the provision of athletic facilities or equipment or for the prevention of cruelty to children or animals, no part of the net earnings of which in in earned to the benefit of any private shareholder or individual no substantial part of the activities of which is carrying on propaganda or otherwise attempting to influence legislation except as otherwise provided in Section H and which does not participate in or interfere in, including the publishing or distributing of statements, any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate for public office. Now, The only reason I read that is for people to get clear that that doesn't apply to any more. It doesn't apply to any more or any Moorish anything that flies under the banner of the Moorish divine and national movement of the world. Quick interjection. Keep in mind. Keep in mind that these same individuals who ride 501c3 and his IRS best friends and stuff like that because they're, cause they're good mores paying taxes, keep in mind that they're going to use Oscar the Priest to make the connection. But remember that just with what was read, if you're 501c3, you're not supposed to be involved in any type of politics or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Right. You're not supposed to be involved in that if you're 501c3. So, major, we, we can say that majority of the more science temples of America that don't teach civics, that's why. Ah. Oh. oh. The majority of the more science temples of America that don't teach civics, that don't teach law, that say that Moors who teach civics and teach sovereignty from the temple and stuff like that, they're renegades and all that. Now you know how they escape dealing with civics so openly. It's because they have that status. So they can talk slick because just like Mother Annie is saying, more than likely, Moors haven't researched to know that that's why they're talking how they're talking. Because really, they can't talk from the perspective of, because what are they dealing with? They're dealing with being tied to Treaty of Verona, which job is to destabilize the republics, which we're supposed to be, you know, an enforcer of. Right. If we say Moorish anything, once we say Moorish, we're supposed to be for constitutional enforcement. If they're not, more of that status is below the Constitution. Exactly. And if that was the case, then, you know, the information we're bringing 
it would have that 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 quasi status would have been snatched. So you know, like I'm definitely I, I'll yield the floor, but I'm just saying it's like we don't have nothing to prove to these Negro minded mentality type people. You know what I mean? Because these are like you say, they are you know willingly paying the tax. You know what I mean? They willingly happy to pay their child support, but they want to be in somebody else's business. So I am i don't feel obligated to explain nothing to them about, you know, what we do or don't have or what anybody on this line does or doesn't have because the work speaks. So, you know, but with that, I, I'll give it the floor for now. I'm just saying these are people who are not even qualified to have the conversation. You know what I mean? They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're in... And then you got, you know, commoners observing from afar, you know what I mean? These these are dudes who is going happily to pay their child support and all of this craziness, and they want to be worried about what somebody else is. These people are crazy, man. These are just crazy. Well, I, what I find, it's wrong. What I find interesting is what Tujo just said. And I remember you saying something to me or something, uh, like uh, when one has a 501C or any of those series, there's certain things that they can't discuss, and that was it. I guess that's what you were, um, we didn't finish our conversation. But that is most interesting because he's saying that, and that makes a lot of sense, that this is, so you got temples who have 501Cs. That is absolutely, unequivocally out of order. However, that's their choice. I guess, and desire and part of how they're not doing this national and divine work at all because they can't speak. Oh, my goodness. They can't speak about the uh, physics. You're saying that they, 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 they can't. So this is why they don't seem to enforce law because they force themselves. Oh, I get this now. They force themselves to be, in fact, as a quote unquote church or pseudo religion under the defines which are limited dealing with these corp- uh, as a corporation and under the union state under the United States of America, and that's also why it makes no sense now why they say they are party to the United States of America because they have obviously willingly chosen to be so, even if they did it out of ignorance, voluntary or involuntary ignorance, it doesn't really matter. That explains why they, thanks for, for clearing that, as to why they people go into most of these infiltrated um, uh, temples, they talk religion without knowing as if they don't know what the prophet really taught in terms of what religion really is, but they keep it as a religious choice, as most people know, religion to be. So instead of knowing it to be law, order, and governing principles, they they keep it right there. That is part of the infiltration. And that explains also, wow, that explains so much as to what they are, in fact, um, doing and why they're fighting it so much. So when they say that, you know, uh, when you go in there and they're not talking law, now here's an interesting thing. Some of them that are trying now or tempting in some way, shape, form, or fashion to be about civics, which is absolutely what the prophet, Noble Dear Ali, was about, <clears throat> they'll go in and create these interpretations and Things such as, you know, the herd statute stuff. We we remember that. I had a conversation about that just not too long ago again. But they'll create that. But even unto with that, that is all under the jurisdiction of the corporation. And it limits them because even with that, they're talking and turning into corporations. I had someone tell me that a corporation has to be formed in order to interface with a corporation, but hold on. The prophet was teaching us about our nationality and our birthright, and he said that we were to answer up to the national constitution, which is the American national constitution, and any religious rights are inclusive in Amendment 1. So, therefore, he said, uh, I created a religious affidavit, right? 
because the door to religion opens both ways, but it's attached directly to the to the law of the land, the constitution. So there's no need to create a corporation because that automatic it, it, that automatically shuts us down and puts us under the jurisdiction of anything and all things that corporations do, such as back to the topic of the day, 501, which is not, and Anna E.D. brought that out clearly, it comes under Title 26 and 27, and neither of them are positive laws. So you're saying that the prophet did all of this and, and, and was the, 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 the diplomat, the person that he was for us to be under, stuff that's not positive law? I mean, wow. If I could just get you to thinking. You free yourself is exactly right. Islam, I yield the floor. And 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 that's why, you know, the prophet says, study, study, study. Because look what lack of studying has brought to the table. To me, that's an insult. Because when you say that the prophet using something that is not positive law, falls under the the, the pain of tax, establishment of a corporation using policies and procedures of the United States of America and 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 gets to have the privilege of an exemption because he uh, functioning under this 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 five hundred one c three, to me, that's an insult to the prophet's intelligence. The man has got to be rolling over in the grave. And but then again, you know what? He's not, because he already prophesied this song. This is why he said, "Study, study, study," because there was going to be infiltrators. Excuse me. Not going to be. They were already infiltrated. This is why he called them out in the letter that is supposed to be read before every temple meeting that is not read today, because he knew before long before he passed on, he knew there was infiltrated in this movement of uplifting fallen humanity. This is why he says to study, 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 so that you do not come to the table of your brethren and your sistren with information that is clearly designed to put them in a category that they do not belong. This is why people have to study. This is why you have to analyze. And this is why whenever you look at the prophet's work, you always have to know it was functioning from higher places, not low places mentally. He wasn't wallowing around in his lower self when he did all of this work. He was up in his higher self. So when he says things, you can't look at it from the perspective of, wow, he created a corporation. You have to go high up. And ask yourself, what was he trying to tell us? Why did he do this? How is it supposed to benefit us as a more American national ancestor on our ancestral estate being lineal descendants of Moroccans born in America? What was he trying to tell us? If you got that he set up a municipal corporation (laughs) using policies and procedures of Title 26 Internal Revenue Service, which is not part of the law, you are wallowing around in your lower self and trying to bring down high work to a lower place where you are, but was never where it was created. That's okay. 
you know, that's that's an insult, but it's an it's what it is really. It's not necessarily a re- an insult. It is an insult to the person who is bringing it, and a huge reflection on where they are, because it is either demonstrating that they are an infiltrator knowingly, or they are an infiltrator unknowingly. Because they mm-hmm. had an obligation to do the appropriate researching and then upon appropriate research bring that information and have discussions with their brethren and their sisters. This is an example of mental conditioning as well. And this is why the study, study, study is so imperative because people... You yourself, you have to root out that mental conditioning that has been deeply planted in your cranium on a daily basis. That means every day. This is what I do. I'm going to just just make it a suggestion to other people listening. You every day when you wake up, whatever you do, You have to ask yourself, am I doing this based on a mental conditioning that is not beneficial to me? Or is this a mental conditioning that is beneficial to me? And if it's not beneficial to you, you need to take the time out of you. And this is where that biblical prophecy comes in, where it says it's your right eye betray you, pluck it out. (laughs) Pluck it out. To save the whole body, pluck that right eye out. Now, I'm not saying that you should go and pluck out your eye, but the equivalent today in plucking out your eye is study, study, study. Islam? Islam, can we, while we're here, um, and you're mentioning this, let's just put a brief thought on and, and have people do the research themselves. We were talking about the 1099. Many people think yeah. that on the back of the 101, that 1099 is an IRS document 1099. However, you did the research that that 1099 was a form. That was a number of the form yeah. from the county filled out when he yeah. did the number filled out when he did the affidavit and the 1099 from, first of all, is not the 1099 from the IRS, but that particular form was created in 1918 anyway. Just, we did some research. Our point is that is not the 1099, right, that the IRS has out. There's, there's two different documents. Maybe they put it out that way to cause some confusion. Don't think that they weren't you know, um, looking at this thing. And that that's what we found out. Yes, absolutely, yes. Um, and, 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 you know, this is, which I know, I, from my own experience and, and, you know, in my history, I know what the 1099 form is. There's many 1099 forms. There's not just one. All of them are internal revenue service documents. Now, how do you know that, the 1099 form that it talked about on on the, on the authority that the prophet created is not the same. I can tell you exactly how it's not the same. Uh, the, t- the 1099 from the Internal Revenue Service, it has to have an Office of Management budget and budget number on it in order for it to be an internal revenue service form. The 1099 form that they're talking about on the back of the 101, in order for you to get a clearer, uh, 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 in order for you to get clarity on what that is in the scheme of things, you got to go and look at the original. On the original, it says Cook County, State of Illinois, 1099 form, and that is the form that would be used to put into the Cook County any affidavit. 
Tell it. I'm pretty sure it was to Google Cook County because everybody's online now. So I'm pretty sure if you were to go to, to the Cook County online and, and Google Form 1099, you would see the same form that the prophet filled out and filed as a religious affidavit. That is simply just putting Cook County on notice that we're here as a religion, yep. a civics organization, religious slash civics organization. And I just yep. want you to know that. Exactly. And if you got institutions, especially Moorish institutions, who are, you know, using 501s or whatever for to say, hey, look, we're, we're religious, whatever, and you know, that's that's kind of opposed to the aspect of just enforce, enforcing the Constitution. Why? Because, mm-hmm. you know, if you're talking about a, a de jure religious organization, that's still tied to civics because it's covered in the law of the land as far as the First Amendment goes. So, I mean, in enforcing that, there's nothing they can legislate on it. They cannot. Mm-hmm. There is no statutory with that. That's natural law. That's natural law right there because you're talking about the relationship between you or the people or your family or whoever is in the same faith or under the same, you know, principles, you know, and the creator. There's no middleman with that. So, you know, it is what it is. It's not It's not about the statutory aspect. It's about the natural law aspect. Right. That's my right. point on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, that is one of the challenges that we as Moors, you know, got to really look at. Um, and, but but before I get into that, I just want to make one side note because me personally, I'm one of those people, I, I don't like to use their form because to me their forms are always colored. But or looking at the forms, huh? Or they could have adhesions to them, you know, on right, the school. Right, they could. But in, yeah. Exactly. And so now one of the things that you have to understand is you have to look at the, the, the form that the prophet used, the original, it, 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 it's set up in a different manner than a lot of the forms that are used today. And it is all in the way that form is set up that they create adhesions within adhesion. So because my question when I saw it was why would he use their form and not create, just create his own and file it? It's not like he signed it all rights reserved. But in looking at the way that form was created, I, I can see why he was comfortable and using that form, also, I know from my own experience, sometimes you are going to find yourself put in a position where you have to complete a certain form that you know is color, and you may not be able to sign it all rights reserved. The remedy, in my opinion, for that is you make two copies, one you give to them and one you keep in your file and you write an affidavit expressing exactly how, why, and how you were compelled to enter into that particular agreement. You staple it to the form and you put it in your folder so that if it rears its ugly head later on, you got documentation. He could have did that. I mean, but but looking at the but form, wait, he comes back. And he did. That, 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 he didn't yeah. have to do that. That's what I'm saying. The way that form is constructed, and I'm not going to get into it over the line, but the way that form is constructed, it's it's not colored and it didn't have a, an adhesion because right. of the way it was constructed, which is the and and he was just putting them on notice. (laughs) So he was comfortable in going that route. But we as more today, if we are not studying 
And this is why even when you get stuff in the mail, don't you? We get so much junk mail. These junk mail, it, it's an opportunity for you to hone your analysis skills at law. All right, because how often are you going to get something? If you're not getting junk mail, how are you going to be able to analyze things? I mean, me personally, I go to the DMV, I get their registration forms, I get their driver's license forms. Uh, I go, if I'm at, I was at the post office, they had the form that they want people to voluntarily sign up for selective service, grab one of those. I noticed that somebody was in there applying for a passport, grab one of those. There's things all around you to grab and analyze because it is in the simple analyze. You don't even have to go too deep and you'll find that all of them do not even apply to you. They don't. They apply to corporations. But the majority of people, they don't take the time to analyze, number one. And then if they do analyze, it's like they go off the deep end. And they read into stuff that's not even there. Like the 1099, Cook County Form 1099. Look at the, if you really think that that is an IRS instrument, go and pull down the Internal Revenue Service 1099. You don't have to pull all of them down, but you can pull one down and just look at it and then look at the the, the document, the original document, and you will find that they are not alike, related in any way, shape, or form. So who gave you this information that you chose not to research, right, (laughs) Who gave you this information and what was their intent? But you don't even have to go into who gave you that information and what was their intent, what was your intent that you didn't take the time to do the necessary study. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Good question. I mean, look. We are in a place and time where if you don't do the necessary studies, you're not going to even be relevant. You may not even be here because it is your obligation. And I am so sick and tired of people not doing the research, not doing the appropriate studying, and then they want to blame everybody else because They don't want to take responsibility for their affairs, and this movement is about you coming and sitting down and taking your place among the affairs of men, which begins with yours. But you want to whine and complain because you don't want to take responsibility and try to make it everybody else's fault. I'm so sick and tired of people whining like that. This is not that. And and if you don't want to take responsibility, go out there with all of these other people out there that's chasing down every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every little story, every little whatever. Go and stay where you are. Don't even bother to change because, look, if you don't want to take responsibility for your life and your affairs, why even bother listen to these recordings? Why even bother to listen to the broadcast? Why even bother to put out a name correction or proclamation? Why bother to do it if you're not going to take responsibility? Hmm. It's wrong? It's wrong. It's wrong. Oh, okay. We weren't sure if you were speaking with the wise there. <laughs> yeah, no, real talk. Because it's about being active more, as Noble Jolly said. So, you know, it is what it is. And it's funny because... And active um, more means being responsible for your affairs. Everybody's yes. running around yeah. talking, I'm active more. I'm active more. Really? What are you doing about your affairs? Mm-hmm. Well, right. that goes with I've given you enough to save the nation. However, go out and save yourself. And that's that was brilliant yeah. information. That's what you're saying now. And mm-hmm. by doing 
so then we will all be able to build in the same space and place and et cetera like that. But, you know, uh, yeah, go ahead. Man. No, I, I'm just saying it's funny because um, people used to call my phone all the time. They want to answer the different things, you know, and, and it's all good. And, and it's not like people don't reach out still and we build and things of that nature. But, you know, like when we when we um, approach doing these blogs and the classes and things of that nature, it is to give people information that they can go check out for themselves and, and utilize in their life, right? And, you know, some people get it. I'm like, listen, we have enough information on the blogs, on RV Bay Publication, Kane Land Moors, but if you listen to the blogs, I'm pretty sure whatever, and, and I'm not trying to say that we answered it all, but if you go back and start listening from August 2013 to now, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have a question for me like that or any of us like that. Like you need to just, because whatever you want to talk about, it's hours of voice recordings on those conversations. The brother contacted me back uh, the other day. We haven't spoken in a while. Why? Because he's been listening to the radio show, the blogs from the beginning archives. And you know what the brethren said? Yo, I went back and started listening to the archives to catch up because everybody wasn't listening from day one. And he was saying, like, I was thinking of so many questions, and the answers is already on the record. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you have to listen to the whole body of things. You know, we can build but I'm I'm certain, you know what I mean? Whatever you're you, you you dealing with, if it's a lawful matter or a legal matter, there's references in the classes that we've already done. That's more than sufficient to get you going in that direction. And I'm not saying that in any braggadocious way, but that's the fact, family. Like it is what it is. Listening, going back from August to now, there's enough material for you to have to listen to for the rest of the year, plus some more, every single day. You know what I mean? If you're just catching up. So, you know, I, I don't mean to be braggadocious, but that is a factual affirmation that I just got. You know, not that we didn't know, but somebody hit me up like, yeah, I haven't been reaching out like that because why? I've been listening to what you all already put on the record and researching that. Some classes you got to go back, you know what I mean, break down. Well, hey, it is what it is. So I say that to say, like, you know, when you were speaking of why even listen to the blogs if you're not going to take self-responsibility, there are some people who get that concept, like, you know what I mean, that yes, there's references are. being attached to the conversation, you know, that you can go check out. And then when you go to the reference, you're going to be there for a while, you know what I mean, because you're going to come across something else you, you, you wasn't aware of, and then you're going to get into that. And then you're going to go back to RV Bay. Then you're going to fall back, watch your videos on Canaan Land Moore's page, et cetera, you know. And, and again, Mantis Views 29, things of that nature. So, like, there's, there's, you know, there's enough information out. I don't want to say enough because information knowledge is infinite. But, you know what I mean, uh, it's a lot of information out, you know. So that that's my piece, and I yield the floor as well. There, there is a lot out, but then um, there's those, like you said, what what is their intent? Because there's also other people putting out stuff that is absolutely contrary to uh, national principles. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know what? You know what? Let me just speak on this, too, because it's some, it's some people who slighted us. Like, they slighted us. Like, oh, I'm not even going to listen to that no more for whatever reasons. And they're going through it right now. But guess what? All the answers, and not to be braggadocious, is embodied within what? RV Bay Publication, MHHS, Blog Talk Radio. But y'all want to listen because that's you. You know what I'm saying? But Kujo got a song called Hidden Message, and it says the deaf won't hear and the blind will not see. And it just is what it is. So, you know, on that note, you know, y'all can keep that. Because whatever you feel personally, whatever your antipathies are, you know what I mean? Whatever your predilections are, that's you. You can keep that, you know what I mean? And, and But 
you know, when you're going through it, you're going through it. There's plenty of references you could have got busy with. But you want the you, you just want to stay if you just want to stay at the oral tradition and not cast the spell and not, you know, enhance yourself, then you know, that's you, man. But we're gonna keep delivering the message, you know, about nationality and birthright, you know, and that's what it is. We all get tested, you know what I mean? We all take losses, wins, et cetera. So, you know, it is what it is. But don't 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 look at me funny when I step in the room. That's all I'm saying. It's not. Islam. <laughs> uh, you, you know you're right. There's there. You know, to me, right now, and I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it's just me, or it, or it's just the energy that's here right now. But it's like everything. Everything is talking to you if you listening. Everything is just so in your face. You know, it, 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 there's a saying: if you have ears to hear, you'll hear. Or it, those who have ears to hear will hear, and those who have eyes to see will see. When I was that years ago, I had to think about: well, I got ears and I have eyes. What are you talking about? Uh. <laughs> it look if if you're studying cuz studying never ends studying has nothing to do with going with what is going on outside you you might like i read like for example this title 26 i read that a while ago i read parts of it a while ago all right but that's all I had to do was find that it's not positive law. Look up what positive law is, and it, that's done. I mean, it's a wrap. And looking for these types of things, you know, really to what, what I find is the studying that we do, that, well, let me just keep it to me. The studying that I have done has removed from within me fear. Because, for example, with Title 26, I had a fear that they could attack me at any given time because of this, the big bad IRS. But upon studying, I mean, going way back to the inception of the first tax and, and when it began, why it began, how long it was supposed to last, and when it ended, mm-hmm. and, and everything after that, today, in my studying, it removed the fear because I learned that not only did it not apply to me as a more, and it didn't apply to me as a corporation, but that the agency that is operating today as the IRS is not even a, federal, a part of the federal government. So that empowered me and removed the fear from within me. Now, at that time, I can tell you I didn't get this comprehension until much later but everything that you're studying, all these different subjects, the right to travel um, your liberties and all that it entails with, you know, having a roof over your head, being free of, of, of interference from complete strangers that you're going to be researching the only thing that the answers are doing is making you stronger internally. That's what it did for me. It made me stronger internally. It made me realize, well, these people really don't have control over me. And when you can get that, I mean, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have days when, you know, the, the, the fear tries to raise its head. But if you're studying, you already know what you got to do to smack the fear down. You got to study again. You got to continue studying. You, I have these these audios on my phone. All right, I have DVDs that I put my recorder because this was back before we had programs that can change a DVD to an MP3. I have DVDs where I put my recorder next to the TV 
and transferred the DVD to an audio, burned it to a CD, and played it in my car over and over and over again so that I could get this out of me with, with, by um, bombarding myself with information. Because that's how you're going to get the fear out of you. If your fear is high, you need to be listening to these audios all the time. Because it's the information that is going to smack that fear down and give you a little breathing space. If you're not studying, if you're not reading, if you're not listening to something that's going to change the misinformation in your head, you are going to be a victim of fear. I don't want to be a victim of fear. And so I'll do anything I need to do to change that fear power, to remove it, to root it out. And the more I study, the more powerful I get to a point where, you know, I just had a revelation today, believe it or not. I had a revelation today because I'm sitting here and, and, you know, and it's like I had in my mind I had this vision of, because I have a, a little meeting coming up with um, these modern Europeans about my right to travel. And in my mind, I had this vision where they were talking to me about, in, in a tone where I, uh, they're trying to make it seem like I'm privileged. And in my mind, I saw myself talking from a lineal descent perspective where, look, the, I, my ancestors are led you to me, this is, this is my ancestral estate. You people are foreigners here. And I wasn't saying it in a condescending way. It's just a matter of record. It is what it is. How dare you presume to tell me what I can and cannot do? This is the type of attitude we need to have. It's not presumptive. It's based on the fact that everybody's liberties are free. Everybody. If you own American soil, your liberties by default are secured because that's what we enforce as a people. You know, that's what we enforce. So in order to get there, you're going to have to study and study all the time and, and, you know, and you're going to have to seclude yourself. And you're going to have to stop having conversations with people who are not moving in the same direction as you. Because that's all they're going to do is put fear in you or move you away from what you are supposed to be doing. You might think, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to uplift fallen humanity. Wrong. You're not here to uplift fallen humanity. You're here to uplift you. (laughs) Right. How are you going to uplift fallen humanity and you haven't even begun to uplift yourself? You know, if you had great fear going on inside of you, you can't even begin to talk to somebody else. Well, it's Islam, you're not saying that the mission isn't to uplift foreign humanity. What you're saying no. is in order to do that, you got to uplift your, yourself first. That's why he said, I've given you enough to save the nation, save yourself. Right. No, right. I'm not okay. saying See, uplifting foreign humanity is about each person individually lifting themselves up. Yes. If we... I hear people all the time calling in, telling, I'm trying to wake up my mother. I'm trying to wake up my sister, my brother. Forget about them. They did not get the telephone call. You did. Your job is to to uplift yourself. Your job is to work on you. You know, we got people running around with issues that they haven't even addressed. And they busy out there trying to, you know, wake up somebody else, uplift somebody else. That is not your job. If you do, if you take the, if you do the work of lifting up yourself, trust and belief, people will watch you. They're watching you already. 
They're watching you and they wanting to know how you calling yourself for more and you out here doing this, that, and the other. I wouldn't listen to you if you was Nova Jirali, come back to life based on what you're doing. People are watching you right now as more is proclaimed. And you ain't even demonstrating that you are more. So no, ain't nobody going to listen to you. But if you back up what you're studying with actions that are relevant to you, the people that are watching you will start to do what you're doing. That's how you uplift the nation. It's wrong. Yeah. That's like the blind leading the blind. I'm gonna lead you right there. And this is what's happening. That's why you got people running around talking about, oh, they have they have five oh one C three. Oh, they got a Dun and Brad Street and you know, just running off at the mouth. Ain't did a lick of studying because if you did you would not say those things. Yep. Yep. It wouldn't even be a relevant conversation like that. I mean, it does exactly. have some relevance, but you know what I mean? They got a 501c3, but you paying tax to this European. Like, like, Moors didn't have the Europeans paying contributions, those regularly advised marks, you know, <laughs> things of that nature. So you know the language. Oh. You know the language, you know what I mean? And, and the thing is, it is what it is. I could say that. We could say that. People don't have to listen. It's the facts, you know. It's voluntary. It's voluntary, you know what I mean? So you got people who've been getting taxed, you know, and now they realize they don't have to. Uh, I mean, they didn't have to, you know. But I'm just going to read this on the record, you know. You don't have to listen to me, whatever, but I'm just saying this is the fact. Tacoma RP Company versus Pierce Company, 193 Federal 90. It says equity can only correct abuses in assessing taxes by invidious assessments when injury has been done, but an apparent exception to this rule has been said to have been established by certain cases. But this exception is only recognized when there is a state statute authorizing an injunction or quality evaluation is the result of a statute designed to discriminate injuriously against any particular uh, class of persons or species of property. German National Bank versus Kimball, 103 U.S., and check your Bouvier's Law Dictionary for the definition of taxes. There's the reference. So when it's speaking of any class of people or persons, et cetera, we all know aboriginals can't get taxed. How many times does that have to be said? You know what I mean? Now, that's natural law. That's international law anywhere. But can they voluntarily pay? Yes, absolutely. But Because they're voluntary. They're voluntary. So, you know, mm-hmm. if you want to volunteer for that, now we're telling you, I'm telling you, you know, and I know man knows not by being told, so let me follow that up with please go research what I just said. You know, if you don't, that's you. I, I don't have, I just, that's the reference. You know what I mean? And there's a multitude of um, information on the About Taxes page, RV Bay Publications. Oh, yeah. You can go in. Okay, multitude. So, you, you know what I mean? If, if if the position is not recognized and you want to watch the messenger opposed to listen or, 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 or receive the message, then that's the lack of your wisdom. Because I'm going to tell you again, I've gained wisdom from the homeless man on the corner. You know, but I was wise enough to know not to make his mistakes. You know what I mean? Like he 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 obviously, or she obviously, you know, didn't follow up or execute on some achievements. Yeah, but does that mean you can't learn anything from them? You are self righteous because the homeless man doesn't have affairs on. He can't afford it, but he got wisdom. Hmm? So what I'm saying is, knowledge, information can come from anywhere. And all the self-righteous, um, yeah, I don't like you because you don't have on the Moorish flag and all of this craziness. You know what I'm saying? You're a fool if you're going to reject knowledge because cause knowledge could come from anybody. 
a European who's not qualified to wear a fez can tell you the truth. Y'all believe it then, though. Y'all believe it then. On that note, I got a video up, Mantis Views 29, Truth from the Youth, Black or White. Watch that. It's only a minute and 30-something seconds of your day. Check that out and tell me you're, going, you, you, you're not going to accept that truth because he's a European or some some corny or something retarded like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's. I don't even know what to call it. It's, it's just ridiculous when we put the, the, well, the truth didn't come in this package. I didn't get, you know, my check in the golden envelope. I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Or I didn't get it. I didn't get my book in a metal box, so it's no good. Like, come on, stop it. You know what I mean? Deal with the facts that information could come from anywhere, anywhere. And if you're not going to receive it because if a homeless man saved your life, you're not worried about all the other, other attributes of his life at that time. You're thankful that your life has been saved, and it was a bum that did it. So what, you going to be unthankful because a bum saved your life? Like, come on, let's let's cut it out, like. Let's get to the information and deal with that. You know what I mean? You don't have to like the shirt that I'm wearing. You don't have to like the pants I got on. You don't have to like what I might do on my leisure time. It's not about that. This is about information. And if you're not going to reach out to even be around, it shouldn't even matter to you. So my thing is, you know, it is what it is. And I yield the floor on that note. Islam. Islam, um, I, I do want to say I want to bring a, a, a while we're talking about this, um, another thing to 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 review. But um, I, I do want to say you're you're right. I heard something that you said about you know when you have like for instance you're talking about taxes, and when you apply the knowledge that you have, it actually and literally emanates from you. And everyone knows that, or most people know that. This activity of us being Aboriginal, Indigenous, more American nationals is widespread throughout everywhere or most places. A lot of those places on the four corners of the earth just through this program, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and, and this program, it, it doesn't cost anyone to get the information. So information, knowledge is power. But information is the source. So you're right about getting the information from wherever you can. This is the age of information. Now, when it emanates from you who you are, I recently went into a store, I just want to say, and I wasn't even thinking. I was so busy and rushing. I was making a a, a, a purchase on something that I needed, and um, I was giving them, a, you know, they were telling me how much it cost, and they had put tax on there. It was so interesting because once I gave them, you know, the bay, I didn't even have to say it. They said to me, they said to me, oh, we put this on here, but unless you don't pay it, unless you don't pay it. Now, whenever do you go somewhere and you don't have to apply your tax thing, I forgot all about it, and they already knew that it emanated from it, and it was not a problem. So, this is how it will be eventually when we all unite as one national family, right? Then they'll know everywhere because all of these corporations and all these businesses, they are on your land. Your ancestral estate. And that will never change that this is your ancestral estate. Never, ever, 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 ever will it change. And they are, are operating upon it with a rule of law that you and I are to enforce. And that's what we need to look forward to as we move forward in gaining, um, or, or as the prophet says in uh, chapter 1, you will gain back your heritage. That means where you came from, all right, and who you are, because he's teaching you to be yourself. And that mental slavery and a part of that great mental slavery for us in this day is to think that these people that are occupying upon our land are, in fact, the authority of us, period. So this is what we, we need to look forward to knowing that this is what 
we're going to do, gain back our heritage and our seemingly lost estate in a conflict that cannot be told in words. Because whenever you are brought to the challenge, if you want to call it a challenge, or to where you have to substantiate your position regarding a matter, whatever that matter is, you will have to be able to spit it from your mouth and also able to put it in written form for self. That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be able to do that. So, you know, for those who can't type, let's say, or whatever, you might want to hire someone to type something for you or whatever like that, and that's called the typing service. And that's, there, there goes another service that could be provided for the family. I'm just saying, you know, these, this is what we should, ought to be looking at now is those types of things because there is, in fact, in fact, work enough for everyone. But we must all be in the same direction because we are one family. Now, I and mean, we, we touched on this, but I, I would like for us to just, there's so much talk about the Pope, you know, the, the Pope and, oh, my God, and British law. We're in America. This is American law. We need to come off of that. I, the way I see it is the Pope gave up the ghost, if you will, last equinox, which is, which is where we just had a year ago on the blood moon. I'm not, oh, was it the spring equinox? I'm not sure now. I think it was the spring equinox. So that's six months ago. It was, it was the spring equinox six months ago, which means we ought are uh, by the rule of, of divine law and of universal law and how the energies work, we are now looking at the direct effects of that. This is the uh, polar reflection six months later is the exact polar reflection of things that happened six months ago. So we need to be looking at that, and we need to give up the ghost regarding the damn pope. He has nothing to do with you as an Aboriginal or Indigenous person. Did he, did, were there certain things, like, for instance, people think um, about British law and English law. We keep applying that, some of us, in our writings, and we're way off the mark because, look, it's the modern European and the Union States and, and, and those colonists who were, in fact, under the British crown. And they still are or have been to this day, but not you. So what they have to do is just the same thing you have to do, and that is to declare their national status, all right? Now, many think that they were freed from the British uh, and the crown, but really you can't find the document that freed them after they requested their uh, Declaration of Independence. What you do find is that the Moorish nation did the Treaty of Peace and Friendship and then the law of the land. That's what it is. So this is we, this whole thing about all this information regarding the Pope, what is the relevance? I mean, I don't see the relevance. Can, can you enlighten me on that if there is some relevance well, now? I can, I, can, I can speak on that because yes. this goes to, this goes to people listening to other people who are listening to other people and then whoever whoever you know initiated this information went off the deep end doesn't mean they did uh, the appropriate studies it just means they 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 read more into something that really wasn't there because i remember a couple of years ago uh the so-called Queen of Great Britain, well, actually the Queen of England, which doesn't even exist, um, came over here, and everybody was going around saying, oh, she's coming over here to check out her property, or, you know, meaning the people. Then the Pope came out with this letter, and he, and, and you know, like, like the most appropriate, the first one, and everybody was like, oh, wow, you know, she, He's letting you know that he relinquished power 
from the municipal corporation. And so from that, people, somebody got it into their head that, oh, so all of this stuff, we need to be right into the code. No. First of all, you need to do the appropriate research, which is why we told people a couple of weeks ago to research the municipal corporation that is near you. Because every municipal corporation was not chartered by the Pope. For example, the corporations on the northeast side section, some of them, many of them, they were initially chartered by Great Britain. You can go and pull the charter. This is it. So if you're going to bring any charges against the municipal corporation, because this is what you so let me let me back up. Let me just back up here, because these people are not freaking bringing charges against any freaking body, but they're on America's soil. They're writing love letters to the Pope. I'm calling it love letters, because why would you write a letter to the Pope? when they're on freaking American soil violating the American Constitution, which secures your liberty, doesn't give you liberty, secures your liberty, why would you write a love letter to the Pope instead of suing their ass using American law because they're on American soil violating the secured liberties of the people? That's Mm -hmm. retard. Stupid, stupid. They have violated your liberty. Why would you not sue them? Why are you writing to the Pope who ain't got jack, probably ain't got jack to do with the municipal corporation that violated your liberty? You don't even know if that particular corporation was chartered through Rome, could have been chartered through Spain, could have been chartered through Portugal, could have been chartered through France. Point is, they're chartered, no matter what. Right. They have a charter, but in law, law is specific. That's like you got all of these wars running around here trying to sue the state, but the state is not violating your liberty. doesn't matter that the municipal corporations who are violating your liberty are contracted through the state. It doesn't matter. That's like saying, oh, I'm going, to sue the, I'm going to sue the state because Walmart violated my liberty, because Walmart is chartered through the state to do business. That's stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. That says to me that you didn't do your research, and you're going to get smacked down. Because in law, law is specific. You have to identify the correct party. And you got to come 100% constitutional. And you got to break down. Look, you got to tell the story. Why are you coming to, why are you stepping into the ring with me? Because you're a foreign municipal corporation on American soil violating my liberty. How? How are you th- how can you prove that they are a foreign corporation pulled a charter? You have to tell the story. This is international law. You have to tell the story. People think, oh, because they're sitting next to me, it's it's local. This is never local when you're dealing with a more and a modern European. It's always international law. You always have to tell the story. You always got a gown. You have to come with verifiable documentation. You're going to put in a federal suit that's nation, that's worldwide, not nationwide, worldwide because you're a more. 
You stepped into the federal district court jurisdiction, and you do not have the proper jurisdiction. I mean, you don't have the proper documentation. You're wasting everybody's time. Doesn't mean you don't have a valid claim. It just means that you're not presenting it well, which is a bad reflection on Moore's across the board. And you was mentioning about the Europeans, right? I sent y'all uh, a link earlier. I don't know if everybody, I know I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but about the sister from uh, from uh, what they're calling the U.K. today, did you get to check that out? Oh, I didn't. Okay, okay. Yeah, I got, I got to check about an hour 40. Okay, I mean, all right, that's what's good. Now, I don't know all the details of it um, because I didn't, I, I, like I said, I didn't, I got to watch like the first 40 minutes and I was stayed up so late or early. I have fell asleep on it, but she she reached out and, and sent this. She basically threw up the distress signal. It's a sister in, uh, she was born with the Appalachian 7, all right? So, so-called UK, the Great Atlantic. So, like, we, Moors here, the Aboriginal people of America is here. Like, when we interface with these Europeans and these tribunals, it's municipal law. And then the next step up, what they call superior courts, they're, they're still Roman institutions, but more so they deal with English law more than, you know, they got the chancery divisions, you know, family court, uh, um, uh, what's it, all, all different types of branches that are dealing with English law if you know the origin. So, like, we're fighting those types of foreign uh, laws here. You know, some people have came through that fight and don't have to deal with that right now. And then, you know, they got them, some people, they got, mostly they're still waging that energy, that agenda on the Aboriginal people and, you know, Europeans as well because they come up under their jurisdiction and things of that nature. Well, anyway, she's over there by what they call England, you know, one of us going up against that. And what happened was she was talking about property, too. She had, like, some intellectual suit. She had a suit for her intellectual property going on. And, like, back in 06 or something like that, or 03, and and, um, she beat the case basically by default. You know, they they couldn't put up a defense. They didn't put up a defense. And and she won the case in court. But she never got paid to this day. Like she just sent that this morning. She never she never received any pay after winning the suit. After she won the suit, they basically just amplified the attack on her. You know what I mean? Um, surveillance just crazy things was happening. Now, mind you, her appellation is seven. <clears throat> so it was like a demolition company or um, uh, uh, um, what you call it, when a construction company type of thing. Like they had scaffolds all outside of her apartment building, right on the level where her window was at after all of this, right? And... When she's walking up, the, the demolition truck, I mean, the uh, construction truck has 777 on it. Now, I'm not no type of conspiracy theorist in, in that way, but this is the message that was presented. And she was showing how this, these Europeans kept stealing her intellectual property, getting filthy rich off of it. And um, that's why the suit or uh, whatever went down. But I wanted to say that's something that, you know, should be checked out. Um, it's called Urgent Breaking News. I forgot the, uh, hold on, let me, let me pull the whole title. Because I can't, I can't give an overall synopsis of it at this point because I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh, yeah. It's called Urgent Breaking News, new TV network, bus satanic crime ring. You know what I mean? And um, I found it interesting when you was mentioning the Europeans, there's more in Europe dealing with the fight. The Kujo brought something to my attention earlier that I did not know about, about more, you know, or Europeans fighting in 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 um in Britain area. 
you know, using the information. You might be able to speak on that a little bit more than me. But I do I did want to do my part in just relaying the message for everybody to check out because she sent it out. You know what I mean? So but yeah, when you get a chance to check it, it's two hours and forty four minutes. I didn't have all, uh the time to watch it all. But it's interesting. Well, Kujo, did you did you get something out of it? I mean more? Well, I mean it's it's um the discrepancy I have is just what what's our status in the issue you know what I mean and mm-hmm. it appears from, from what I've seen it appears by the um, mannerism that she's approaching them with that mm-hmm. she's maybe she's maybe a um, she got 70% of Negro black colored you know, anger and stuff like that to uh, do it still. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not, not taking away what she's, you know, her claim of what they're doing because, you know, going through it to 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 the level where I got to, they're definitely attacking her. Like, it's not like, you know, she's some crazy lady or something like that. Um, she's definitely, you know, she she put her facts on the table you know, it's not like she's just talking out her mouth. Like she got, um, um, you know, letters and audio recordings and video and ample amounts of proof that these people are messing with her. But you know, it it appears that they're messing with her because they know they can. Okay. She lacks the intelligent tone portion. Yeah. Well, lacking the intelligent, yeah. Right. Well, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't listen to it yet, but mm-hmm. one of the things that I have found um well <laughs> I mean satan satanic crime ring uh, what is yeah, that? Well, that's the intelligent tone, yeah. right? Oh, that. Yeah, just yeah. like that. See, busted yeah. satanic crime ring. To me, okay, first of all, she <laughs> has to address issues that are relevant to you. Like, do you have a roof over your head? Um, uh, 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 do you have a right to travel? These are basic liberties. See, uh, uh, you know, are you are you paying a corporation for the use of the natural resources of the? Me, to me, those are those are issues that we need to be addressing. A satanic crime ring. Um, I don't know. I, I don't believe in a Satan at all. Mm-hmm. People have people can be mean at mean. Spirited and vindictive, and if that's what you want to call Saint Fanny, well, then that's an issue for that person. And you know what? It's just not my job. I don't have the ne- I don't have the energy to be chasing down everybody who poor mean spirited and trying to make them do what you know. I, I just don't have that energy. I have the energy to deal with issues that affect me. And I know in in, in in dealing with those in, those issues that affect me, I know they affect the vast majority of people. So, like, if I'm making it, if I address a right to travel specific to me, it's affecting everybody else. So, so for me, if I get a win in that perspective, I'm going to share it with everybody else because it's going to be helpful to everybody else. But something that, you know, you're you're going on a crusade and you're looking for all the bad guys, I don't understand. I don't know what that's about. You, know, well, you should definitely there, check there's it something, out. There's, I'm, I'm going to check it out because then it, there says, there's something that says she wants some sort of a case. But I'm going to tell you, one of the things that I have found with people, our people, if they go on a, a baseless crusade, 
and and um, it's like they don't ever give you all of the relevant information, and and it just seems to have no purpose to me. It just doesn't seem to have no purpose when I know that everybody is here for spiritual growth of self. But too often people want to be martyrs. And they do things that that get them into these situations because some way, shape, or form they want to be martyrs. And it never fails. I mean, I've talked to people and they're like, oh, they're following me and 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 they're tapping my phone. And, and I'm like, okay, so what are you doing that is so relevant that they would tap your phone? Nothing. Okay. What are you doing? You, what, you, what, what you find out is that they're harassing every damn body and, some of the people they are harassing, you see, in their mind they're saying, well, I'm just going to let everybody know what's going on. I'm giving them some information. And in their mind they're giving people information, but in the people that they're supposedly giving information that they didn't ask for, that's harassment. And those people will report you. Then you've got these Roman soldiers coming after you, and you're like, oh, my God, I don't understand what's happening. You didn't, that's not your job. Your job is to work on you. So invariably, and Rob, you can can affirm this, every time we have spoken to people who just seem to have the, 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 you know, dragons breathing down their neck, when we pin them down and we start asking relevant questions, well, we, we never get all of the information. We will start on a plan of attack based on what they gave us, and then tomorrow we'll get some additional information, and then the next day we'll get some additional information, and then the next day we'll get some additional information, and and by the sixth, seventh day we will find out that, man, maybe they brought this to their front door because they did stuff prematurely, inadvertently, or for whatever reason, but everything that we, I mean, you end up spinning your wheels because you're working the first, second, third, fourth, fifth day only to get to the seventh day and realize that everything that you have done was just a waste of time because the, the relevant piece of information you got on day number seven, and you needed that on day number one. I mean, sometimes it's like me personally, I feel like these are infiltrators. They are sent to make you waste your energy and time spinning your wheels when you could have been doing something more productive. Right. Now, you're not necessarily speaking about this because we haven't read that yet. No, I'm so not, I'm not necessarily like, speaking about this. I'm just saying yeah, that we, yeah. we got to be, uh, we really got to do, you, let me tell you, it's so funny because years ago, you know, years ago, <laughs> Uh-huh. When I decided that I was going to become a member of a, a, a Orthodox religion, right? Shortly uh-huh. before I I got into that, my sister said, "Now be careful now, because once you go through that process, everybody's going to come at you to try and you know sort of corrupt you." You know, like, and, and, I, and the way she said it, I had visions of you know devils and demons and whatnot coming at you, even though I didn't believe it, even then. But that was my feeling, based on what she said. And you know what I found? Once you try, once you get into this information and you start going within and cleaning up a lot of the crap you have inside of you, it's like everybody comes at you. Can you help me? I need to talk to you. Can, this is my problem. This is my problem. This is my problem. It's, it, it's like they, everybody comes to drain your energy. And you have to, you have to, you know, and it's not that you want to be, it's not that you want to be, um, what they call it, selfish. Because, you know, whenever you try to focus on yourself, everybody, these modern Europeans have us mentally conditioned to believe that that's being selfish. It's not that you don't want to help people, 
But you can't. You're, the best way you can help somebody is to make sure and get yourself right. Help you. Uplift yourself. Raise your energy. But why, once you get into that mindset, everybody see everybody and everything seems to come along to distract you from doing just that. This is what I have found. I it could be I don't I, I can't can't believe that it's only me. I know it's not only me because I just heard this that you he gets into the he gets into the book and gets phone calls and that what does it do? It pulls you out of the book. And it's like mm-hmm. once you get in, once you make that that declaration to yourself that I'm going to clean up me, I'm going to get in the books, I'm going to study, study. It's like everybody in their mother comes at you and pulls <laughs> you away from getting in the books and studying and cleaning yourself up. And it's like you got to you got to really look at people and and you really got to pick and choose if you're going to work with somebody because you got to first work on you. Mm-hmm. And well, working on you is a never-ending process. I mean, hell, I've been working on me all my life, and I feel like I still haven't scratched the surface. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say this too, adding to to what you're saying. The other thing that's really interesting is, and it's annoying at the same time, but it's understandable. Do we understand it yet? Is that when someone will go out and they'll do something prematurely? We're gonna call it prematurely because it really just means they just didn't study what they were about to do and get their the strategy. And there's nothing wrong with building. To, to do that, but they'll go out and do something you don't know they did, you don't know what they did, or how they did it, and then they get into a situation and then they, they it's, it's all right to, to ask questions because that's what we do, we build, but they expect you to get them out of it and you don't know nothing about it. And then you, like you're saying, wait a minute, if I'd have known you did that, then you, if you had asked, before you did that, I would have told you, no, that ain't the right thing to do. And we all have to go through this. Don't get me wrong. But it just shows a lack of study. But the hard part that's real hard is when, and there's many out there, they'll go not do the appropriate research, do something, and then try to blame it on, let's say, you or, or, or I mean, they publications or whoever, they got it from without them, them them themselves looking into it before they made the move. But that's the worst one is when you get a call and they're like, "Well, you're you know you're in my nation. You're supposed to say as if it's a club and they're members or something. You know what I mean? And it's a nation. It's not that you know. But they'll say you know, well, they'll do all this stuff and you and you don't know they did it. And as you mm-hmm. said, once you get the real information, like, oh, shoot, dang, no wonder that's happening, you know, like that. That's the one that really is uh, hard to hard to figure out how to navigate because you don't want to not assist and you figure out what you're assisting already by just sharing the information, but it, uh, and you got to apply it yourself too. So, like, you know, and have applied it for the most part, but when they do that and then expect you to do something, they didn't tell you they were doing what they were doing, and then you really don't know what they actually really did until you start pulling teeth. You know what I'm saying? How mm-hmm. can you assist that? And it's just not its not right. It's not fair. So, anyway... I'm gonna. I am definite. I'm definitely gonna listen to the um, audio. I am. Um, yeah, I wanted but, to add this on too. I gotta go back and 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 watch this uh, again or listen to it again because, like I said, I stayed up really late or into the early hours of this morning, and I fell asleep after the first forty minutes. But then I woke up when it was about five minutes left, and I think it was her cousin giving a. Um, 
uh, uh, he was doing a video, and in the in that particular part, if my memory serves me correct, he said that, or she said, my cousin is a melanated Moor, but then watched it with black woman type of thing at the end. You know what I mean? And he was whoever that was was like, and just know that. You know what I mean? So I woke up at that part. Yeah. So yeah. you know what I mean? This might just be because we gotta keep in mind too, like this is about the uniting of Asia. Facts, right? So the fact is that Europe really what they're calling Europe is really not a continent. It's a part of Asia. That's that's the real territorial fact. And you know, it's no no um wonder why there's a lot of Moors there. Like Moors is nothing new for Moors to be there. So, you know, I was just saying it like, you know, well, I don't know what she knows completely, but maybe that's why she's reaching out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She reached out yeah. to the right people, I would say, if if she don't know, you know what I mean? So right. the message came through, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe it's something she could, because like Kujo says, she's directly in the belly of the beast right now. You know what I mean? Like everything that people are dealing with here, you know, child support, chancery division, all of that stems back there, right? Because we got to remember Moore's history is global. It's not just limited to one landmass. So you have Moore's over there, and I know we got a lot of Moore's here that need help. But if we're talking about restoring, you know, or uniting Asia, a global empire, you know, we need to connect with people and, and exchange ideas. We know everybody's not perfect, you know what I mean? Everybody might not know what Kujo knows. Everybody might not know what I know. Um, I might not know what they know. I don't know, you know what I mean? But that's the whole point of connecting is to build and ameliorate. And, and there might be some things that's off. And we can say, hey, you know what? You might need to check out such and such. You know what I mean? RV Bay Publications. You might need to check out uh, a class, Canaan Land Wars class. You might need to listen to a MHHS Wednesday class. You know what I mean? It could be something as simple as that. That helps. And, you know, she keep doing her thing, you know. Everybody keep doing their thing. But, you know, when you see an initiative, that's that's being in the essence of as uh, aspect of being active. We don't have to babysit that. You know what I mean? Like it just might be a bill, you know, whatever. I don't know. I'm just saying that you know it's pretty interesting because when I woke up at the end, she was talking about the trumpets that blows at this quote unquote courthouse. Now, mind you, this building, this so called courthouse, this is this is a castle. Like, this, this this building is serious, you know, gargantuan. Like, not like, you know, your, your, your backwoods one-floor courthouse or three-floor. Like, no, this is a castle, a palace, you know. It was really interesting looking at it. I'm pretty sure it has, it was a castle they probably sacked or overthrew and yeah. they removed was from, you know what I mean? So I'm just looking at it like, there's something we could learn from it, and there's something we could probably teach from it. You know what I mean? And and yeah. I'm pretty sure once we all, because mind you, it's like two hours and 44 minutes. So I think once we all watch it, right, and then break down different things or take notes that, you know, we might have a more, I know I would have a more informed idea of what's really going on. You know what I mean? I know because I missed a, major, uh, a large portion of it. So, um, okay. you know, but I just found it interesting that, you know, this is a more sister who's basically, you know, throwing up the signals of being attacked with cyber warfare and things like that. And I found it interesting, right, because the sister was trying to get, she was trying to start her show. She was trying to start like an internet show uh, about two years ago. And, uh, my fault. Uh, the name of it. I'll repeat the name in a second. My fault. It's uh, it's called. Well, I'll, I'll I'll get that to you. Somebody just texted me and asked me to repeat the name, but I'll do that in a minute. But let me say this. 
she was trying to start her um, internet. I mean, yeah, her internet uh, show, TV show, like you know, broadcasting type of thing. And what happened was her computer got hacked. Like the people who were stealing her material was hacking her computer to do it. So, like, they was trying to shut her message aspect down. So I don't really know about her message like that. You know what I mean? But I know it must have been something, whereas the Europeans was trying to shut it down. They stole some of her intellectual property. And um, and she was like, all right, well, they, they got this. They hacked this computer. She went to buy a new one, like, and, like, before she could even get on the Internet, that one was hacked. Like, that's the type of cyber warfare they're dealing with the system on. So, you know, uh, it's pretty interesting. You know, I got to get the whole story. My fault. I'm trying to pull the name of it up again. What was it called, Cool Joe? Say, um, damn. Hold on. I got to pull it back up. Let me see. Hold on. I got it. More. Uh, Hold up. It's pretty interesting. It's called, it's on it's the it's called the Seven Report. Now mind you, we're talking about certain aspects of symbology, right? Because we know that in in perceiving thing we perceiving things, we have to have aesthetic abilities too. So meaning that you have to be able to comprehend symbology and sim and sublime thought. Meaning that, you know, we can all look at a circle with a quadrant, everybody might not relate that to, you know, the four seasons. But those of us who have the knowledge base already know that's the earth glyph. That's the the four quarters, the four seasons. You're dealing with the 360 and things like that. So, you know, some people who don't know that are not going to see it like that. You get what I'm saying? So even though they're looking at the same thing, and and – it is what it is. So uh, the fact that she was born with the Appalachian 7, right, this is a Moore sister in Britain or what they call it in the U.K., to me it was just like a, it was a different type of message waking up to. But, okay, yeah, it's called, uh, what we got, what we got, uh, Urgent Breaking News, New TV Network, Bus Satanic Crime Ring. Hold on, my fault. It's rather lengthy staging false flag terror globally. So I don't know. Like I said, I can't, I'm not vouching for it all the way. It just seemed like something that might be worth watching for those listening and things like that, you know. I guess we're saying the other names for that is, it's really your lower self, you know, as lower self. Yeah, activity. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah. not actual being, so. Right. We're talking about an energy. You know what I mean? Like, we've heard the aspect that Satan means Saturn and things like that, you know. But if you're looking at it as, you know, because it's certain things you're talking about retribution. The other things you're talking about, people who are on their lower self activities. Like, if you're talking yeah. about demonics, you know, if basically if I say, yo, you, you're on some demonic, whatever, you know, I'm not talking about, some, you know, cartoon mythological figure. We're talking about a lower frequency, a lower self, right? As Noble Jali even used that language in the Circle 7 where he's saying, you know, if you're looking for your devil, if you're looking for your demon, that's within. So you're talking about the energy that sits in people, the the, the duality, right? Of, that's right. That's, that's, that's you know absolutely I mean? correct. And that is absolutely correct. And and then of course you got to get into the universal law and get into cosmology to understand uh, how you can find your lower self, because really it's the aspects that are conflicting in your chart. <laughs> That's really what it is. And then you learn what those energies are and how that affects your activities or what you do, because it's all right there. And and so Saturn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I mean, we've got we've given it. Yeah, go ahead. But you got to say um, something? Yeah, no, Kronos, Father Time, right? Kronos, That's what they Father say. Time. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So, we, we, mm-hmm. 
We in that age. We in that time, you know. And and but you know why it's it called Kronos, though, for real, for real? Because remember, man is nine, right? And we come in, as we say, through these experiences to learn lessons that we must and will learn in one cycle or another. And so, you know, we come through uh, the rings of Saturn or we try to get out of the rings or rings of Saturn, you know, which is law, order, and governing principles. And we all we are all law manifested in the flesh, so we're here to learn those lessons, to go through these experiences, and you will not pass through the ring of Saturn until you are in fact in order for whatever that lesson is for you this time. Now, when you look at Saturn, it it's on the tail end of a generate. Well, it is a generational uh, planet indicator or a generational energy indicator because you can look at where Saturn is, and it will be in for a generation of people, you know, because that's the cycle of time. When you go to the Mysteries of the Secret Brotherhood of the East, you know, it starts telling you, you know, seven stages that, you know, talking about the seven the seven uh, 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 planets that are the most influential in this solar system area, geographically, astronomically. So, you know, that's really what it's talking about. Where are the people at? You know, what level, where are they at? What what garments shall they wear now? So each generation it comes, which is why this is all for our posterity. When you want to understand, you know, the so called younger generation or whatever like that, um, you under you, you have to see where Saturn is because that's the the stern lesson that's coming. Or that is that is a necessity to uh, to be learned at that time generationally. I mean, you can actually raise your your family on that knowledge, absolutely, because that's what the energy we are coming with. You know, so um, we we the next age though. Now the next age is Capricorn because we're in a Christ because backwards through the ages, right? And the ages go the other way on the wheel, um, mm-hmm. counterclockwise. So when we get these lessons now, the, when we get these lessons now, the next age is to receive the achievements, awards, and honors for the work that's done. And that's what the next age is really going to bring in. You know, and some people say, well, what do you mean? Because, you know, like, I'm not there or I'm not whatever like that. But we're all where we're supposed to be to go into these cycles because these cycles are going to happen regardless. So that's why it says, we, um, I don't have it in front of me, but it says we they, they sat to meet to see where the people are along the way because it is the way. Whether you want to accept it or not, that is what's going down. So... That's what the, it's really all about. And if we don't, if you don't, if you're speaking of yourself as an individual, if you don't get it, um, you'll just be coming back to get it because that's the way the cycles roll, period. So that makes, it's like if you miss this train, you'll get the next one, you know what I mean? Because it's going that way when it comes back again, you know. But... Um, Anyway, so that's why it's Kronos because it's Father Time because and also Father Time because in your time, in your time you'll get it because you're gonna to have to get it and the patience of time, the patience of you know like that that planetary energy is really it's, it's about what you what you do because it's about retribution justice as well and Saturn is absolutely connected with that because justice. It's from law, order, and governing principles, right? So it's in your time that you'll get it. And nothing is going to spoil you in that respect. You just have to catch the next train. Like I said, I'm using that as an analogy. So in your time, because you will not pass through the rain of Saturn until you do. And it's just that simple. So if you want to waste time or go through experiences and keep blaming other people for them, because that's one of the things that I have found that I think that we've done, you know, uh, as a people that is uninformed about the truth about why we're all here and what's going on and what energies are and what is what and who is who. 
is that we often, often blame other people for the experience that we just had, not accepting the fact that we had the experience so that we could learn and learn from other people. And then once you understand all the energies and you really get that it's really about uh, the higher self and the lower self, that's right in the one-on-ones and they explain to you what the higher self and the lower self is. And quite frankly, the higher self is, begins with the principle of love, quite really. So once you understand that all of this is happening, that, that you will be able to recognize the lower self in others and in yourself. And so to to do that, you know, you, you can start with your own chart, your own, I call it the resume because it's the true resume. It is really the true resume, where you've been, where you're going, what you've done, and what you have capabilities to do. And so when you look at that, like we said, back to the ages, masterminds trace themselves, thus they know, you will know what you did before that you are have already perfected and what you need to do or where you are going. And so once you get all that straight, and especially as families, we instill that into the children the post, for posterity. Say, you know, we'll all line up as one because it's just one, one love on the one, right? That's it. And so all of us are, are striving, you know, and, and different people say, well, you know, they have different what they call religions and different what they call gods, and it's all the same, same uh, 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 energy not necessarily a being, but people call it different things and things like that. And they're all striving to sit at the foot of their God or quote-unquote God, what they call God, which is really governing ordinance department, which is really uh, law, order, and governing principle of the universe, which is one word. You know, they all say they're going to sit at the foot of that. You know, these are the things they say, but you're not sitting at the foot of anything if you are not cleaning yourself and if you're not ready and if you're not uh, 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 ready to sit at the foot of anything, the foot, the head, or anywhere else until you get your soul straight. And that's what these experiences are. So I find too many of us, and I remember the days when I think I was the same way, you know, um, blaming other people for why you can or cannot do what it is that your soul dictates for you to do. And that's what a lot of people hold themselves up and you know what I mean? Well, I couldn't do that because of so-and-so and such-and-such. Such. No, 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 because you have to follow the dictates of your soul. And if you find that you are the only one, you will be the only one. You you will have to, you will then have to understand why that road is narrow, because you may be the only one on that path. This is your path and your sojourn. And if we're afraid of the boogeyman, well, then he shall come out of the woods. That's what it means in the mysteries of the um, uh, Brotherhood of the East. Chapter, I think it's seven or eight, correct me, it's seven or eight. You know, it says, Oh, they saw, they raised their lanterns and saw a uh, saw demon and they went, went crazy. You know what I'm saying? But that's just your lower self. So, right, you but, but then what you about know? the part? What about the part when he says they saw a demon in the wild? Yes. They cast <laughs> all their lamps at them. Mm-hmm. Thus the priesthood has gone mad or something like that. Like, yeah. after they cast all their lamps. So I thought about that, and I was thinking about that. I'm like, were they saying, is that like another parable for they're going crazy because they're pitching pearls to swine? Is that what it is? Like, why would they Why would they have all gone mad after casting their lamps, right? Because you're talking about the light. So if you're casting your light on the demons, thus you're going mad. I don't. What what do you say well, I'm, about that? I'm go I'm, I'm gonna go right to it and, and get with that and then give you my understanding of it. It's um what chapter am I looking about? Four, five, seven, right? Seven. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna read it exact and you know everybody else can read it too or do what they do with it or whatever. Because I don't really like interpretations, but you know I guess right. that's all that we can offer. To we can only offer. Things can only be offered to us based on our ability of uh, interpretation, I suppose, and that's based on your level of knowledge and understanding. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of things are done in parables. When you look at something in parables, right. So, and the gifts of understanding are the treasures of Allah, and what? Allah met it out to everybody that do portion. So, you know, that's why we're building it. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Let mm-hmm. me find that real quick because I have, I, I want to make sure we get it right. Uh, five, six, seven. Is it seven or eight? Is it seven or eight? Dang, I can't find it. Of seven, uh, um, I guess it's seven council, council of the world or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's either. Yeah, I know, and I'm looking for it so I can read just that one part there, and we could because this part about casting the light. I had my um. Mm, let me I think find it's, it. around, it's around India. It's around the huh? India part. I think that was Zadia Party. I think. You know what? I'm. I apologize. I'm looking at sixteen instead of you know Roman. The so-called Roman numerals, because they're not really Roman numerals, but everybody should know how to write them and read them, though. It's, yeah, 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 let me, let me now I get it. Um, uh, shucks, I'm at 15. Give me a second, y'all. It's going to be worth it. Um, it is called, it is called 7, okay. Camps, Chapter 8, Mysteries of the Secret Brotherhood of the, of the East, the Council of the Seven of the World. And what it says is, um, all right, well, I'm just going to get and read it. It's not long, and it kind of uh, applies to what I just said about the uh, cycles of time. In every age since time began, but seven sages live. At the first of every age, these sages meet to make the course of nations, peoples, tribes, and tongues to know how far towards justice and love their race has gone, to formulate the code of law, religious postulates, and plans of rules, rules best suited to the coming age. An age had passed, and lo, another age had come. The sages must convene. Now, Alexandria was the center of the world's best thought, and here in Philo's home, the sages met. Now, Philo, is that's um, love, that's the philosophy, Sophia, right? Mm-hmm. Now, you got to break those things down, too. And I know you know the Vidyapati. So it says, from China came Nancy, from India, Vidyapati. So these are the books that they're actually referencing as well. From Persia, Caspar came. And from Assyria, Ashbina came. From Greece, Apollo came. Masino was the Egyptian sage. And Philo was the chief of Hebrew salt. The time was due. The council met and sat in silence for seven days. And the ministry rose and said, the wheel of time has turned once more. The race is on a higher plane of thought. Hmm. The garments that our fathers wore have given out. The cherubim have woven a celestial cloth, have placed it in our hand, and we must make for men new garments. The sons of men are looking up for greater light. No longer do they care for the gods that are hewn out of wood. They seek for Allah not made with hands. They see the beams of the coming days and yet comprehend them not. The time is right, then we must fashion well these garments for the race. And let us make for men new guards of justice, mercy, and love. That's part of your hot to hide stuff right there. Read the one on one. That they may hide their nakedness when shines the light of coming days. And Vidapati said, Our priests, they have all gone mad. This is the part we were after. They saw a demon in the wild, and at him cast their lamp, and they are broken up, and not a gleam of light has any priest for men. All right, now, mm. Mm, now what I'm saying is when you cast the light of your higher self onto your lower self that you call a demon and Saturn, I mean, uh, Satan and the devil and all that, you understand what I'm saying? You will realize when they say, when they say, not a gleam of light has any priest for men. And it says that, let me just read this other one. It says that um, the night is dark, the heart of India does call for light. The priesthood cannot, the priesthood, the priesthood, the priesthood cannot be reformed. It is already dead. Its greatest needs are graves and funeral chants. Well, they're talking about all them churches and, you know, false, what you think this religion that's going, because what it's saying is, is that, in order to reach this higher self and this place of love and mercy and justice, you have to shine a light on your lower self, which is the demon. And why would you need a third party intervener to do that? That's how I interpret that. It's wrong. It's wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I, I just thought that was interesting that, mm-hmm. you know, if anybody else want to add on, I just, I thought it was interesting that he said we they seen a demon in the wild at him cast their lamps. Now the <laughs> lamps are all broken up. Yeah. Because what, how would a demon break the light? Is that pitching pearls to swine? Because, you know, mm-hmm. I know being enlightened is supposed to dissipate the, 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 the lower self, the demonic self. If you will, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Exactly. Exactly. But then you got those, uh, like you know, you've seen the different movies. You throw the light on the demon, and the demons start running away, and all yeah. of that. So yeah. I mean, like, I'm, that's something I'm, yeah, I'm, and I'm cool with having to, you know, think about that. That's food for thought, for real, for me. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, well, why did they? Why did their lamps break? after casting the light at the demon, like, well, why? You know what I mean? They were not it's, the real light. Remember in the, in the scriptures it says you got the seven candlesticks and then you have the real light with the stars in it? I don't think right. that was the real light. It's exposed, you see. And, and, I, and I don't want to cut you, but I just want to add, and I should have, I ought to, have, ought to have added this last this verse that comes right after it says, the priesthood, it can't be reformed. Because that's right. not, that wasn't the real light in the first place. It is already dead. It's great as need to graves and funeral trains. And then it says, and this is to help I answer the question, the new age calls for liberty, the kind that makes each man a priest and enables him to go alone and lay his offering on the shrine of Allah. They do good only because they fear to do the wrong. And it says, and this is real powerful here. It says the devil is the greatest power in our land. Oh, and though it is a myth. Oh. It, oh, it's myth. Uh, myth. Both the young, the youth and the age. There it is. So I, I, I think that it was fake light. Mm-hmm. Got you. Got you. <laughs> Which most people have behind, yes. Mhm. Mhm. That's my thing, but you gotta say cool, Joe. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm right with you. Those priests okay. ain't really cool. <laughs> 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 Those priests have some flashlight talking about they got the last <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks. That's the layman's uh-huh. turn. That's beautiful. <laughs> In case we didn't get it, that's where it goes. Battery died on the flashlight. Nothing about the light with a flashlight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause the light is within, you know what I mean? I mean, it's the truth. Right. That's why you got to yeah. know your high self and your low self, and it'll fix it all. And if I'm in air, would you go ahead? No, go ahead, coach. I think it also goes to what Mrs. saying that of the stupidity of the priest to even cast the light at the demon. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. right. And and then and then the fact that they casted the light at the demon and then <laughs> the light's broken up, that means where they cast their light didn't hit nothing. So they <laughs> <even> have- <laughs> <laughs> and it explains it explains a lot on where the people are today, you know, not getting that, not really getting that satisfaction. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I'm with you. I, I, I totally get that. So I think it's, it's a, it's multi-dimensional when we're talking about that particular part. I mean, all of that is multi-dimensional. Talking about the seven stages convening, you know, mm-hmm. to influence the course of tribes and nations and their tongues, right? Their language, mm-hmm. right? Which is jurisdiction, mm-hmm. right? So yep. you go right there. That that's universal, right? The seven. Yep. And I think it's a part in there where it says the the number of the perfected man is seven or perfected man rests on seven or something of that nature part of me. Mm-hmm. But again I think that goes back to, you know, a monkey is going to be a monkey. You're not going to train them to be a human being because it, that's not what it is. You know what I mean? It just is what it is. So in doing that, you'll exhaust the resources you have. Your lamp will be no good. 
You know, that's just how I, I kind of see it. It's like another metaphor for pitching pearls to the swan. You know what you I know mean? What? I, 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 I got to say this because you said what you said, and I have a verse in my head from the 70s or whatever by Well Done Irvine. Right, I, I think I had you listen to it. It's a little. They did a little song on it, but it says you cannot get to heaven by praying on your knees. A man was meant to stand tall. The monkey swings in trees. Now, if you want to get to heaven, I'll tell you what to do. You do justice by your children, and they will see you through. The seeds of any nation need water while they're young. Although deprived from education, the work is still yet to be done. So if you uh, follow our solution, you'll end all this delusion. And the solution is to love your brother and peace to one another. It's wrong. It's wrong. You can pull that up. It's called, um, it's Weldon Irvine, Weldon Irvine, um, and it's called Love Your Brother, the song. Got a nice beat. True. Mm -hmm. Definitely a check that. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. what we can do at this time, since it is yeah. eleven forty-one, and the live internet feed has gone down like um, about two minutes ago, take a uh, quick question. Well, before you uh, before you do that, before you do that, just before the live internet feed goes down, we are going to be at, at oh, it's New gone. It's, it went down at eleven thirty. It's eleven forty now. Uh, I always like to announce that ahead of time, but it's all good. We'll be at New York. <laughs> Manana. Now, um, go ahead. I just wanted to make that statement. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see. If anyone would like to make a comment, have a question, make a statement, press one on your cell phone dial, and we'll take your questions in the order that they're received. And we have caller 412-969. You're live on the air. Please state your appellation at Northwest Maxim. This is family. This is Energy U. I don't know if Northwest Maxim. I really, really did. I'm so grateful to be able to get on this evening. It's been hard the last couple of weeks. I can't get in. Uh, number won't work. But whatever. Study, study, study. Always got stuff to do. Islam, it's good to hear from you, Sister Energy, sincerely. Indeed. I've been making things happen on my own and being who I am, loving life, life loving me. <laughs> <laughs> I was loving the conversation, man, talking about it. And yeah, you just say that. You can say all that. Yes, you can. As much work as you all put in, come on now, stop playing. <laughs> Who's doing the work like y'all doing the work? Seriously, because I don't know. I ain't heard of them or anything like that. <laughs> That's just the prophet. No, 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 seriously. Since Drew been on the sea, who else been putting it down like y'all been putting it down? People need to stop being ungrateful. <laughs> That's a lot of self-activity right there. <laughs> I mean, come on now. And anybody to try to come at, you know, any anything that you all have produced, built for us, Seeing how our only institution, the prophet, the prophet established one institution. You see what niggas did with that? Come on now, <laughs> stop playing. <laughs> of course we gotta build other things. Stop playing now. I'm not speaking against the temple. Don't get me wrong, but I mean we know that they did what they did with it. And I mean yeah. that's just facts. So I'm not speaking against the the temple. I mean, but it's just a fact. And and like Kudo spit it out, I'm like, yeah, if you can't figure that out by now, and because I have already did my testimony about my own personal experience with one of the founding temples as far as in the area, that Drew established. You feel what I'm saying? Here in near Pittsburgh Corporation. You feel what I mean, come on now. What is y'all doing talking about reincarnating? If they fell for that, of course they fell for a 501c3. <laughs> 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 Stop playing! Come mm-hmm. on, man. This is, I mean, not say, I mean, basically, since we're on the topic of lower self and higher self, yeah, I mean, it gives you something to gauge from. You see how higher self and lower self operate outside of you, even though, yeah, we—that's what you're dealing with in all your experience, higher self and lower self. So when you have any encounter, just hope 
that you're working with higher self all the way around. But lower self creep in and just hopefully you're aware enough, cognizant enough, studied enough on how to handle that. <laughs> handle your affairs. Mm-hmm. Getting on tonight. Oh my goodness. I'm looking forward to my little information, you know what I'm saying, dispensing experiencing coming up tomorrow. Just share the information. I, I'm going to start out with some saw rock. I ain't going to front. Cujo, love you. I'm always bumping you. Played you today as I was doing with a brother on the corner. But anyway, um, but I'm going to let it be known from the door. Look, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just uh-huh. assisting and doing my part in helping to uplift fallen humanity. And I'm good because I'm doing me. I'm uplifted. I'm great. I'm feeling this. I'm just here to do my part to let you know, have at least one discussion in your existence concerning this information right here. Now, what you do with it, it's up to you. <laughs> you know, right. but just understand, all those that's in the room that's taking in what I got to give you right now, you're making it harder for me to do and be who I am, just for the record, so you know. You know, I'm not trying to put you in harm's way. You putting me in harm's way because you insist on acquiescing to being the BS. But anyway, that's how I'm coming at them. I don't think I'm here to convince you of anything. I just know for a fact that we're just not given certain information. We're not having certain conversations. So since I have been privy to some information that I have found most pertinent, I have been moved to share with more people. All right. Concerning said matters And if you find You know value in it May we continue to build together But outside of that I ain't here to convince you of nothing Child please If you ain't got it by now As much as Google is Google is like that big mouth chick In the neighborhood And knows everybody's business And don't mind telling <laughs> All you gotta do is ask her She gonna tell it So if you ain't got it by now Whatever yeah. All right. I keep right. telling them babies. I was like, I was children are, you know, children are welcome. The more the merrier. I kept saying that every flyer I gave out. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Make sure them babies get there at least. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what's really good. That's what's really good. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, so, oh, yeah. And the flyer was headed this way. Find out if Black Lives Matter. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go on. And could I share that at the um? At the conference, but yeah, that's what I had at the flower ass. A little simple thing. Find out if Black Lives Matter. Uh, and yeah, just let it be known. No, I don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. No such a thing as a black life. Right. For the record. <laughs> Real simple. simple. We're not crayons out here. We're not talking about <laughs> shirts and, you know, pants out here. No, we're talking about people, and people have nationalities. Did you know this? And mm-hmm. I know there's going to be a few Europeans there because it's going to be facilitated in the library nearby. <laughs> so I'm, like, looking at them. They know their nationality. They know where they hail from. They bloodline. Mm-hmm. So what's going on with us? Right. Right. Yeah. Why we got to fight it? Why is everybody willing to accept every time they see a heavily carbonated, melanated person that they black in this landmass anyway? But you can't accept that they so those same beings are Moors? <laughs> Don't make sense. That condition, right. that, that mental slavery, that, ooh, you got to love that. Just to watch it operate and not be caught up in it? Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> it is so lovely because you can sit, especially if you're in a position as I am as a mother, you can sit back and use that as a working example for your children. This is an educational moment. Children, look, this is what lower self look like, <laughs> sound like, operate like. There you go, real simple. So if you see that operating in you, check that. That's your job. Because if not, the voice is out there waiting for you. I, I just look at the, uni, uh, the so-called European as the modification, the amplification of lower self. You know, put it in 3D for us since we don't get the message for some reason. Thank you all for the class, though. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. That's peace. It's the energy. So we're going to be able, uh, you go in the class, you're going to be recording it. I will be dude, able I'm to on catch a flip that phone. later. Huh? <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> I said, dude, I'm on a flip phone. 
I don't get caught up. Uh, oh, if if there's someone in the crowd, you know, if mom's if she's attending, you know, nine times out of ten she'll be able to do something with her cell phone. I know a couple uh-huh. people that I've come across in the family that they say that they attend. That was something that they was going to do. I mean, time will tell. Hopefully, it will be documented, recorded because I mean, I don't do much in this arena because like I said like you like uh mama said you know it's really about working on you when you're working on you you are building the nation yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's really that simple when you're doing you appropriately right. yeah you you doing the work of uplifting fallen humanity and by me being a female slash mother y'all a lot of work is getting done because I got little people under me and I'm willing to reach out to the rest of my little people that didn't come from my so-called physical womb, but I know they mine, mm-hmm. you know, so I mm-hmm. love being able to engage them because I know well, they ain't getting this plate nowhere else. They getting said that, that, mm, that commercialized, saran wrapped, oh, my gosh, what is that? That's not even food. Oh, goodness. Right. It's like seeing right. a, a year and a half old child eating a bag of hot Cheetos. What is you doing? Give me that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we right. need to right. stop playing. Right. <laughs> well done, steak. Style. No teeth. Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm just grateful that I'm in a position to actually share. And I'm doing all this in love. I have no hidden agenda. Like Mama was saying, you know, people get out there and on these crusades and all that. Man, I ain't even, I mean, people suck, first of all. But on the flip side of that, we all in this together. So I'll do my part the best I can. But don't be looking at me to carry you on my back because it's not going to (laughs) happen. I got four babies and I ain't fitting to carry not near one of them on my back once they get past walking stage. You crazy. Uh-uh. Right. I give them the information. I brought them up in this. Your journey is your journey. Again, if you don't do what you're supposed to do as far as your affairs, how are you? You can't put that on me, especially me as a mother. I'm, I can stand up and testify. You can't put that on me as a mother. Mm-mm, not at all. I'm doing my part. I study constantly. That's just a part of life. That's just like the rest of my religion. I eat like breathing. <laughs> yeah, studying is important because you got to encounter so much madness out here. In in one instance, but after you study for a little bit and you're earnest about it, you're sincere, and I don't like really using that word because I know that word means my bricks have no cracks in it, but anyway. But when you're sincere with what it is that you are embracing as far as the movement is concerned, then you're not going to be looking to get over on anything. And a lot of people, they got to be honest with themselves. When they hear the information or they brought back this uh, reality, the first thing that they're thinking is from lower self, and it's like, oh, good, so I don't have to listen to nobody else. Oh, should the great the relate um, the responsibility is even greater now because you really have to listen to somebody, and it's yourself, and you got to start doing that, which is appropriate because if not, you got the information, so you have a greater responsibility now, and you really ain't gonna be able to shake it. So hopefully those who do come and uh, sit tomorrow and those who um, have me come into different so-called study groups or whatever, uh, they need to realize that this is not a game. This is cosmic energy you're messing with right here. And Mm -hmm. you can sit up here and fumble the ball if you wish to. You will get steamrolled over because we moving forward. This is divine and national movement. Hey, (laughs) yay. And I'm working definitely from the divine side as far as the information that I put forth. And when it comes down to the legalities, you know, writs, um, learning jurisprudence, learning jurisdiction, learning, you know, case law and things of that nation, uh, that matter, of course I'm going to send them to one of our finer, finest institutions, rvbaypublication.com, as well in conjunction with Canaan Land Ward. Yes, indeed. I'm always sending them there. Why? Because where else am I supposed to send them for pertinent, accurate information? Mm -hmm. I ain't got it. (laughs) And the fam has put this down. There is no error in that which they put forth. What is you doing? And anybody attempts to speak against it, you know what they is. I mean, come on now. They always got to be some haters in the group. That's how you know you got it going on. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, really, (laughs) I ain't even mad at that. 
I mean, folks have uh, recently I've heard some people talking crazy about Taj and Brother Cujo up there. I'm like, really? Who is these people? They obviously don't know, or they definitely getting a um, <clears throat> what they think is paid. Come on, man. Stop mm-hmm. playing. I appreciate y'all though. Active, like active, much. active. And I'm with you on that, Miz. Don't be calling me. We've been studying mm-hmm. just about the same time. Don't be calling me mm-hmm. with no questions. Nah, yeah. no, nah. yeah. not with no questions. Nah, we we we, we, <laughs> we way past that. Or you just playing, and you lazy as hell, and I'm not giving it to you. Nope. Yeah, it's I'll not even like you a like on that, the phone. <laughs> Yeah, nah, but real talk, though, sister, energy, it's it's all good. Like, you know, it's cool to reach out, call me. But you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Ask how I'm doing first. Don't be like, yo, I just got this ticket and I ain't talked to you in seven yeah, months. But you, you know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. No no prudence. No prudence. So my thing is, in, in consideration, too. So the thing is, yeah, we, it's, we definitely want to help. But, you know, don't. Don't expect me, like, to do a three-, four-hour class on the phone when, you know, we got blogs with thousands of hours. You know what I mean? Like, check that out. Like, if you really want to know, we put it on the record. So my thing is, you know, it's all good to build. I'm not knocking that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, we're trying to do things, too. We're still trying to move forward as well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's... A lot this to be done, you know, and uh, it's like if somebody is cooking you food in the kitchen, you don't disturb them. You you know what I mean? Like they cook it, let them do what they're doing, and you know the the, the meal be well prepared. You know if you just let them do what they're doing, et cetera. So my thing is, yeah, I'm not saying I I, I can't talk to nobody, but I'm just saying also realize too that there's a body of information that we've all collectively, you know what I mean? If you want the oral or the, or the written, you got RV Bay Publication, Morris Nation Public Records, and then, mm-hmm. you know, you got MHHS, Blog Talk Radio, Sons of Allah, every third Thursday, Sister Standing mm-hmm. on Law, every third Sunday, and we do uh, Tuesday and Wednesday weekly, you know what I mean? So it's like... Mm-hmm. Thankfully, and how much like you I want said, to talk y'all got about institutions started for us. Yeah. Hey. Oh, and also, also I want to say too. Let yes. me say this: free, yeah. free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no stop playing. It's at no cost. What is you doing? Right, <laughs> right. Also, also I wanted to put you onto this too. I, I don't know if you know, but I started a channel, Mantis Views Twenty Nine. And, um, yeah, Mantis Views 29. Check check that I'm out. Cause you, I'm not going to type. I can't type that in, so shoot that to me. No, first. I'll send you the text. Well, I'll send you the text. Okay. But you, okay. you, you, you're you going to be on it just so you know that. You know what I mean? For the record. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You heard those oh, yeah. And let me share this with the family. Years ago, I was told that I was going to be seen, you know what I'm saying, worldwide. I didn't know how that was supposed to be, but something like, you know, me doing a little bit of something on tape for you all when you all visited to the territory, you know, and mm-hmm. I didn't know how it would manifest, but I see it manifest. So that whole me writing a book did that, that's out the way, you know, and this manifesting mm-hmm. like this and some other things that I've already done, like even being – at the uh, recent conference and speaking there, I mean, that's on YouTube, so that's global as well. That mm-hmm. that right there, I mean, the divine side, the, the, <laughs> having that connection, knowing that that's what I am first, spirit first, having a human experience, it makes it so much easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does. It really does. It's you can appreciate indeed. your experiences. And don't get so caught up in the emotion of it all. I'm not saying you can't, you don't operate with emotions. That's a part of this experience, but you got to know how to appropriately use them. This is chess. And mm-hmm. most of us, at this point in the game, we might know what the, piece, the names of the pieces, and we might even know how to set them up, but we don't know how they move. And if you don't know how they move, <laughs> you can't play the game. You feel mm-hmm. like you have no strategy. Mm-hmm. And that's where we're at. We don't know how these pieces move. 
And the queen is the most powerful thing on the board. Goes back. Indeed. Goes back. Mm. Man, I, I look yeah. forward to getting that text. I look forward to seeing me again. I didn't know I, I filmed so well, but I appreciate that too because I'm an odd looking female, but whatever. <laughs> Stop playing with yourself. All right. I, no, I'm good. I'm no, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not you. down in me, but I'm keeping it a buck. <laughs> You know, what? Uh, yeah. Y'all know they didn't say nothing to her. Yeah. Like, like Mama Ra, she gorgeous. Look at her. Ah, I see that little gray curly hanging down. I was like, look at her. I know. Oh my God, I bet it's flawless under there. But anyway. <laughs> nah, but real facts though, sis, and I'm not even trying to hit on you. You know you're beautiful, and I'm saying oh, when this video inside. goes up, when this video goes up, I'm not, yeah, not trying to make you a target. Know. But <laughs> brothers, don't. Hesitate to comment. Remember this clip right here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let the sister know what it is, man. Like, nah. I just appreciate being able to get the information out that I'm well received by all those that I actually have to encounter. I am so appreciative of it because I, uh, I encounter all nationalities and I speak to them all in the same vein. I really do because we're all under the same, you know, uh, attack actually as natural people. And, and it's just that simple for me. You know, it has nothing to do with the shade of your skin for me anyway. But, yes, my allegiance is to my people first and foremost, for the record. But they are my sons and daughters as well, and you need this information. Mm -hmm. So I'm just appreciative to be a part of it. It's something worthwhile having in my so-called adult life because I could be really off on some really dumb stuff right now, wasting my Mm -hmm. time, my energy, watching my children grow up. I I don't have to do that. When I'm being myself, I get to be exactly what I'm supposed to be with my children, you know, helping to do something productive for those that I come into uh, in, uh, interaction with on a daily basis and even eventually globally. I appreciate knowing that I'm a part of that. And I hope a lot of mothers start waking up and realizing that that's their part too. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. All right. Thank you so much for your um Thank you. To hear from you today. Love y'all. Peace. All right. Peace nice peace. peace and love, sister energy. Mother energy. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. And Ed, you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, got that mic thing again. Always the mic thing. <laughs> uh, what we got going on? I see you there. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh, All right. I am. Oh uh, yeah, right. We were just going to the next, next caller. Oh, oh, all right, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we'll talk to we'll talk with you later another time. I appreciate it. Peace. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. Just All right. Caller four four three seven six nine. You're live on the air. Please state your appellation at Northwest Maxim. Islam, Islam, Islam. I am Hassan Ghazi Bay and Hill at Northwest Maxim. How's the family? Very well, All is well, man. You. All is well, man. Awesome. <laughs> hey, Miz, what's up, brother? How are you? All <laughs> is well, bro. How is you and your wife, man? Indeed, indeed. An awesome, awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, she's a little under the weather, but she's uh, getting getting much better. Um, but we are actually here uh, near the county of Cook uh, now, uh, travel here. And um, it is amazing. I am in awe. Uh, it's kind of like my first time, like, so-called, quote-unquote, Midwest, for like a better uh, diction. Um, and to just be here and to see the energy here, and it's just like to really look at the back of my 101 along with Brother Devon and uh, the other um, nationals that are here, too, um, at Marvel Center, Um I, I just really wanted to say, like, um, you guys have truly inspired us. Like, we we know, like, we're like the the like the baby generation, though. But we are thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly um, excited to just know that in this lifetime we were able to come across 
um, Prophet Noble Drali, CMB's work through RB Bay Publication, Moore's Orders at a Roundtable, uh, Moore's Heritage and History School, Canaan Land Wars. I mean, you know, Cujo, you you already know, you know what I mean? Like, and 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 I mean, Mother Anna either like to to be like very honest with you, like you really, I know for myself and even Brother Devon, like there's a certain courage that really comes. You know what I mean? From deep within, when we can really open our ears and not be niggas when we listen to y'all and really <laughs> build a strength, you know what I mean? Really build a strength inside of ourselves that really we can really see, like, y'all are really telling us the whole time we already got the keys, but due to the fact that we come up indoctrinated under a system that really didn't mean us well except to be debtors in society, and, and then coming on later in life to like really come across the truth about our nationality and birthrights, it really does make you want to go out and find people to help in in, in, in the midst of you know uh, assisting your, your your own situation. Of course, cleaning up the doo doo in your own yard, as Brother Taj um, so eloquently says, for us to really get that and how serious it, it is, and really just you know just in, enforcing law. So. I just really just uh, wanted to get that off my chest, brother Devon. If you want to add anything, I love it. Um, I just, I just, you know, um, I just can't thank you guys enough for just being able, you know, um, to provide us with a platform where we're able to even, you know, um, just provide people with the information. Just, you know, with Brother Hassan being here, not even a full seventy-two hours, and just the experiences that we have you know, come across with just interacting with, with different mothers and different sons, you know, it's truly um, it's truly divine, you know, when you experience what we've been able to experience just with people coming up to us, seeing us in our national headdresses and just the conversations that we've been able to have and, you know, just telling them, you know, just it's all because of what we study. It's all because of R.V. Bay. It's all because of, you know, our mother's mother, Ross Ryan, mother, Anna Eden, and, you know, our brothers like, you know, Brother Cujo and Brother Miz, like that we're able to even articulate what it is that we're articulating in the moment. So for me, it's it's always humbling, you know, for people because people look at us like, you know, we somebody, but it's like, dude, we nothing but your family. You know, we're not nobody special. It's just that we study and we make it fun, you know what I'm saying? Like when we do the Facebook Lives and we, you know, do what we do, people look at us like we some type of, stars I mean it's like dude we just study and we make it fun because we understand that this is what we're actually charged to do. Like when you really know who and what you are and you can stand firmly on that and you have you don't have a shadow of a doubt about it, it's like it becomes second nature where it's like the way you put your pants on every morning, that's how we live our life with this information. So it's like I said, for me, you know, because it was like really like at the beginning of this year in January, and I still had a Facebook message when I first reached out to Grand Chief Cujo and asked him about nationality, and he just came to me straight like, look, you got a number? Because I don't play about this. And like just like ever since then, I remember listening to my first, you know, um, Sons of Our Lost show with Brother Miz and Cujo, you know, and just really going from there and really kind of seeing where I'm at now. You know, it's just, like I said, for me, it's just more humbling than anything to just know that I wouldn't be where, I, where I'm at currently now without having a platform of, you know, rvbaypublications.com. So, you know, I, I'm just thankful for you guys for being able to be so selfless to even have a platform where, you know, brothers like Brother Hassan and myself can have this information so that we can do what we're charged to do, which is uplift fallen humanity. That's correct. That That's beautiful, brother. That's very well said. And when we said that, the uplifting fallen humanity is certainly the mission, and we're speaking of those. Like, we're not saying that you're not supposed to have that call out, come here to truth about your nationality and birthright. You're not Negro, colored, and black. That is absolutely the call out. That is actually, and the mission is definitely to uplift fallen humanity, and the platform is definitely the most divine national movement of the world. Um, and we, we're speaking specifically or mainly of some who run with it and haven't fixed and felt and done and experienced what you just really expressed, but are going to, like, help other people and they have the wrong information because they haven't 
need to experience themselves. So we're glad to hear um, to hear what you're doing, and and you are going to get people who are going to see you, and then you're going to get some that's going to try to defer you or deter you <laughs> from where you are. But if you're strong with it, just stick on the path, and you'll be fine, and you'll help others as well. Indeed. Um, I just wanted to really share real quick, um, just for the family members that, you know, um, may not know about this situation. Um, so maybe a few weeks ago we were traveling towards the um, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for the convention that um, – oh, yeah, shout out to Mother Energy. She she is – I'm trying to tell you, yeah, Mother Energy, you are ready. Yeah, yeah, I am. But uh, <laughs> we were traveling towards um, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for the convention that Brother Amazite Ramondas Bay – um, had put on a um, Grand Street Cultural Ottawa L was able to um, travel safely there and, um, you know, just be there just to be, you know, a big brother for us. So it was um, seven of us, hence the number seven, um, three mothers, four sons, and we were in a rental, and uh, we were ran off the road by the state patrolman. Um, he pulled up, you know, and came up to the land conveyance, and he asked, if um, I knew why he had pulled us over. And my response to him, because I was the one who was operating the land conveyance, I simply um, stated to him that I assumed that it was some form of an emergency, seeing how you have these lights on, but seeing how there's no (laughs) corporate select time. I don't really understand why you're pulling us over. He was like, well, you're doing, oh, I was going 92 and 70. I was like, oh, I was not aware of that, but okay. He was like, well, license, and I need to see your license. I was like, well, um, being the fact that I'm not driving, um, I don't have a license because I don't need permission, but if you need to see identification, I do have that. Um, Now, mind you, I'm the only person in the conveyance who's ever dealt with policy and forces in this type of capacity. Now, I could have easily given him a corporate driver's license, but in my head I'm thinking, okay, you know what, it's no time like the present. And I have yep. these nationals and the land conveyance with me. So, you know what, let's just show them what it's really about. So I stood firmly on my square, and I um, gave him my right to travel card. Now, of course, we're dealing with an Albion, so, of course, he's looking at it like it's a deer in headlights. He's never seen it before. So he was like, you don't have a driver's license? I was like, no, I stated to you that I'm not driving, so why do I need a license? So I said, but I do have another form of identification if you need to see that. So I proceeded to give him my Lodi American identification card. He was like, what is it? I'm like, it's my ID. It's my state ID for my nation state. So he goes through the process of, you know, looking at it. He goes back to his vehicle, obviously, to get some type of uh, information from whoever he needs to talk to because, obviously, he's never seen this before. So he comes back to the conveyance, and he's saying, asking me if I knew the laws about marijuana and this, that, and the third. He claimed that he smelled uh smelt so I'm like okay whatever he was like well I need you to step out of the car I'm like well um for what purpose because according to my fourth bill of right I have the right to be secure in my person houses papers and effects etc so he was like well if you don't I'm going to have you removed and it's going to be unpleasant blah 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 so we went through all of that at the end of the day seven of us stood firmly on our squares nobody handed over a corporate instrument in the form of a driver's license and at the end of the day um what he gave was a traffic safety reminder. It's a traffic yeah. safety reminder. <laughs> now, we are on I-80 East on the Ohio Turnpike, and again, seven nationals, nobody had a corporate driver's license, and I could just tell, you know, he was reading the information on the right to travel card, and he was saying that he didn't, he didn't agree with some of it, but he did agree with the Murdoch versus Pennsylvania that states that no state shall convert a liberty into a privilege, license, and attach a feature. So he was like, oh, I'm familiar with that. So if you're familiar, <laughs> so if you're familiar with that, then you're familiar with everything else, you know, and he was just basically stating that he didn't agree with this. But in my head, I'm thinking, like, you know what? I'm going to let you think that you know more than me because at this point I don't have anything to prove to you. He was trying to right. tell me how the car was a weapon and all this and that and the third. But I say that to say everything um, for the family that may be listening. When I tell you that the information is very, very true, but you have to be one that is willing to study, mm-hmm. study, study, because if I was not of the mindset that I knew who and what I was, I would not have been able to stand on my square. Now, I've been in situations in the past when I had the mindset of a Negro, black, colored, or African-American. When I saw those, I saw the lights behind me, of course, my knees would shake, my heart beat would increase. But when that happened, I didn't have a – I'm not going to say I didn't have a current in the world, but it was like 
I really wasn't worried because at the end of the day, I knew who and what I was, and I stood firmly on that. And we were able to safely travel to our destination and made it to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for the convention. So for the family that may be listening, you have more as I heard to tell you one thing, but I'm telling you from what I know, not what somebody else told me because man knows not by being told. You know, so I stood firmly, and at the end of the day, nobody was shot, nobody was tased. Now, we're talking about seven so-called black people. We all have locks. When have you ever heard of seven so-called black people being on the highway, pulled over, and nobody shot, tased, arrested, kidnapped, <laughs> anything? You know, so when I'm telling you nationality is the order of the day, I'm telling you what I know, not what somebody else has told me. I yield the floor. Yeah. Wow, lastly, that's so beautiful. Um, and if they could ever ask you, where well, where did you get this ID from? You say from my national family. That's it? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. In, uh, indeed. It, and I had to cut you with him. I just wanted to say, uh, lastly, uh, um, as Brother Hassan, I just wanted to wrap up because I know it's probably others that want to get on the line. But we definitely wanted to share that. But being here, like he said, in under 72 hours, um, there's a um, – Actually, near the Grand Ballroom, uh, here, if you guys wouldn't mind the sharing, at um, eight, it's 804, right? Yeah, 804 East 64th Street at the corner of that's Cottage Grove, uh, near the Grand Ballroom. It's Marvel Center. Um, and it's uh, definitely at least nine of us now, nine nationals. And we have just, uh, just this Sunday, I was able to, uh, uh, present with Brother Devon and Mother Mari, Kylie Bay, and uh, brother Eliyahu and Yeremiah, Yahu, uh, Mother Cadence Hill. I mean, it was a lot of, it was a lot of great energy. I mean, it was like a turnout about uh, thirty uh, mothers and sons of all ages. People really genuinely uh, wanting to learn cosmology and civics, uh, actually seeing how it can be applied. Uh, we have been witnessing as well. Uh, we uh, have taken very seriously from uh, past blog talks from uh, Mother Anahita and Mother Raz. Uh, I remember you told me just last year about having a product or service, and 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 really we're we're just having so many things that we're doing from like newspapers, we're uh, doing instrumental CDs, just as a collective now, not just as individuals. And we do see the power in the numbers, as Brother Abdullah uh, uh, El Talibosi Bay uh, also reiterates, uh, and and as well uh, Mother Anaida, I and uh, Brother Devon took very seriously. I remember it was a blog talk. Um, probably at the beginning of this year, and you said uh, not only do we need more engineers and scientists to really come out, you know, if you know, like, a different science, HVAC or electricity or whatever, that's great, but we also need kind of like some type of, uh, you were saying, like, an aboriginal, like, defense or something like that. So I and Brother Devon, like, we, like, really ran with that, and um was thinking and was like, man, let's just do first aid, like a first aid ministry, like first Aboriginal Indigenous defense. So what we've done with just observing the writs on the Moors Nation uh, Republic Records, uh, on the uh, Public Records True and Divine, or, or uh, wherever we, well, usually that's how we go to to get to the Moors Nation Public Record uh, to uh, study the different writs, um, and just really looking at it and studying the language and really studying the different words and things. So we saw how we've learned how to write rich for our own situations, no, no matter what type of claims were made by any de facto um, whatever situation. So it's like now people are like really inquiring how are these things done. So I'm seeing there aren't a lot of people that may go about studying the way that we had. We we was going for the audio and video. We was actually looking at, okay, why is this stamp here at the top right-hand corner of the front of this red? What does that mean? Why is it on a 45-degree angle? So when we actually gone and analyzed these things as, as a team, we see people are, like, maybe not wanting to go and grab it. So we are providing, you know, so-called writ analysts, I guess, or analyzing classes at Marvel Center. There's so many things that's going, going on here, and I, I just – the question that I'm having in my spirit now, like, what was the prophet thinking back in July, you know, uh, 20th, 1928, when our authority was was placed here, you, you know what I mean, on the back of the 101, that is. So it's like now I'm just really seeing, like, actually the, the unity manifesting. So there's so much going on, and we're really taking what you guys are, you know, putting out there seriously. So all we can say is just, 
keep going on, you know, like like they say on the basketball court when we out there hooping, don't let them get in your head because we really, y'all really the giants whom shoulders we stand on, whether y'all admit it or not. But that, that's facts, though. But with that, I yield the floor. We love y'all. It's Islam. It's Islam. Oh, it's Islam. Thank you very All right. much. Our next caller is caller 513-295. You're live on the air. Please state your appellation at Northwest of Mexican. Peace and love, family. This is Sister Ellie Trish. How are you all tonight? Yeah. Yeah. How are you all? How are you all? <laughs> I am. I, I, I'm really glad that I was able to get in. Um, I've been listening to the show, and um, it's on point as, as usual. But tonight's on point, it's on fire. Um, everything that was said, you know, I concur with. And um, just from having to like go inside yourself and study, and when you find yourself having adversity or at war. You know, you got to go back and you got to sit down and you got to be quiet. You got to stop transmitting sometimes and you can't save the world. And um, and that's, that's right. been my journey, but it's it, and it's been a, and it's been a journey, but it's been a good journey to say the least. Um, because with wow. through all of the adversity, I have so much, and I've been able to reanalyze and reposition my thought process. And. Um, and, 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 of course, we're coming with that, you know, the, the realigning of the spirit. So, um, you know, I've, I've been listening, you know, just, just not listening, but just playing back in my mind, like, some of the things that Noble Jew said. And one was that I'm going to keep these Europeans here long enough to teach you government again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, and, I've, and, 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 you know, sometimes you just listen. You sit back, you listen, you talk to people. And, and and you know that everybody's not going to give you the story because that's a nail in their coffin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they're not going to tell you that, but they know it. You know, they know it. And and, and, and so throughout this, you know, my journey and my, my travel, you know, through, you know, from one month through the next, you know, I've picked up a lot of uh, different information, of course, you know, and, and, and just relearned information that I've already had. And but but at, but can see it with new eyes, and so um, and I've had a lot of different people come into my life with different stories and things that resonate well with my spirit, and so it's been really good. And so I think that uh, I just wanted to get back on tonight and just let you all know that um, the information that I've learned, you know, um, just to even get me to this point, <clears throat> I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't. I didn't know much. I didn't know how to read, like I thought I did. I, I didn't know those things, and so now as I sit back and I read some of this stuff, I'm like, oh, 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 okay, I get it now. And one of the things that um, the biggest thing that we that, that the brothers were talking about tonight when he said we didn't give him a commercial ID, you know, that's dealing with instrumentality. You know, um, instruments of a of a of a trust of an un, 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 unincorporated trust that lives by law, and um, and like we said, what we have to do is we have to take what we know or what we learned. And so, because when I was going through the schooling process and I went to college, my spirit still wasn't tainted. So it wasn't like you know, even though the the, the, the curriculum was given to me per se. My spirit was still there, and I still knew that, you know, I wasn't going to ever use this for, to, to go against my own. I had to figure it out for myself. It was the reason why I was going through those things. And so um, even with that, I, I just can see it from a, a business perspective. I can understand the hierarchy. I can understand the, the, the trust and, and what's going on and the unincorporated, not using the instruments that have been given to you. And understanding, like, oh, and just let me just say this. I have I was teaching my daughter a couple nights ago the thing about common nouns and proper nouns. And the very thing about it is just that the noun is just a person, place, thing, or idea, but a person is placed category with two other inanimate objects. And so when they normally teach you or give you, like, what an example of a person or a place is, they'll give you, like, a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher. And you don't realize that they're talking about the occupation. Or the title, the thing. It's not you. And um, one other night we were watching um, 
the one cartoon that used to come out when we were little. Um, Conjunction Junction, what's your function? I can't remember the the the, the real name of Schoolhouse Rock. And it was a it was a brother. It was a brother that they had drawn. He had a nice afro, and he was in the red, white, and the blue. And uh, they were talking about verbs. And the first thing he said is, I am. And I looked at my daughter, and I'm like, wow, do you understand what he just told, told you right there? Do you see that everything that's going on with, with that? He's got on the red, the white, the blue, the, the, the octopus colors of the first people here, carbonated. And he said, I am. And they taught you all your life you were in the category of a now. And the only thing that's in there is that intellectual property, that name, is not you. And so it's just, it was just, just trying to even teach my daughter that I had a revelation. Just going back to elementary, just understanding what a common noun is, a proper noun is, a verb. We just don't know what we think we know. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, with that, I will yield. I just wanted to say thank you. I just want to let everybody know that everything that everybody said from the, you know, Sister Energy to Brother Hassan to the brother, I, I, I hate that I didn't catch his, his, his appellation. Um, but the other brother that was speaking, man, everything was just so on point. Everything. Everything. Thank y'all. And I appreciate it. I love y'all. Peace from All right. Much love. Much love. love. Yeah, because he's well, yeah. too. I, I, I'll be checking back in. I'm, I'm still with y'all. <laughs> I'll still be in. I just have to get quiet sometimes. Because I got I to gotta, I gotta go back in, in my brain. <laughs> All right. Sure. Thank you All so right. much for the call. All right. Call us 706-424. You're live on the air. Please state your operation at Northwest Maxim. You got about two minutes. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is Brother J. Bay at Northwest Maxim. I just want to say peace to the family, um, love, and much support to everything that you guys have you know, I've been doing and I've been putting on the record. And um, it seems that it's short on time. I'll just um, get straight to the point. Um, listening to the show tonight, the reoccurring uh, theme was study and save oneself. And And I just wanted to add that that in my own experience, um, coming into the information and, and and what limited study I've been able to do and, and interacting with other brothers and sisters, um, conscious, well, unconscious mores, rather, I found that it's a war of many, but a battle of one. <laughs> and I really... And I really understand that now. That it's a war of many but a battle of one. So that if I if I fight this fight the best I can myself, then I've done I've done my part. And in that war we interact, we share provisions, we share strategy, but the battle is still of one. So I so I grasped that, and it just it just struck me that the common theme of the whole show the night was just that. Um, uh, and secondly, I wanted to add that there's a um, there's a television show now on um, HBO. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's a new series, and it's called uh, Westworld, and um, it's sort of a sci-fi flick. But I was checking it out uh, the other night, and in a modern... When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com, and you could save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike 